Hello, and welcome to Scuttlebutt, the war movie review podcast. This week, we're looking at the 2019 film, The Outpost, which depicts the 2009 Battle of Camp Kettering. As always, I'm joined by Mike B. You got to restart that. Okay. Cop Keating. Oh, I'm going to fuck it up. Cop Keating? <laughs> yep. Yep. Cop, like, combat uh, outpost. Keating. Oh. Yep. Oh, gotcha. 2009 Battle of Cobb Kettering. Cop. I'm going to type it to you Cop. on fucking Facebook. Jesus type- Christ, dude. Is this a number? Is this another <laughs> one? <laughs> it's beautiful. We have to have this. Are you are you just stroking out? It's yep. It's all right. Again? It's all right. Cop. You stroke gotcha. it out. It's all right. That's what I was saying. <laughs> Fuck you. It's beautiful. Stop. I, I she just would just say- she would just have she would just have Chris do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was there. One second. Um, <laughs> no, but um I just sent it to you on yeah, Facebook. Cop Keating. You need it. Cop Keating. Keating. Cop Keating. Yep. Keating. Keating. Yep. It's that mass hole accent coming out. Yeah, fucking, you know, the right way to say <laughs> things. You know, right. I'll throw some cheese whiz in there. Hello, and welcome to Scuttlebutt, the War Movie Review Podcast. This week, we're taking a look at the 2019 film, The Outpost, which depicts the 2009 Battle of Cop Keating. As always, I'm joined by Mike B. Hey. Nate. I just put gum in my mouth for a podcast. How stupid is that? Nice. <laughs> and this week's special guest, Chris Jones also known as Jonesy, an actual member of Red Platoon who was there during the battle. So, guys, what do you think? <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot to lot You're trying to, to go first. We never let <laughs> you go first. my turn? Yeah, we never let you go first. Why? The the film. Uh, you just put gum in your mouth. I know, you and, I just, and I just spat it out, and it was like, you know, citrusy. <clears throat> um, no, I mean, like, I, I – it's funny. Um, Brian, and I, Brian and I watched this for fun, I think, back in – Oh God, twenty one, I think. Yeah, yeah. before Dear Rosa, and um, yeah, before we did all Dear Rosa stuff, and it was, it was funny because like, it, I I liked it, and um, and you know I liked it, but I didn't like it for some other things. But then as I watched, and I'm, and I'm keeping it vague for for a reason, is that when I went back and watched it this time around, I loved it a whole lot more than i did the first time i watched it i don't know it grew on me i, I won't go into, into quite specifics because i want everyone to kind of have some even time but um you know just as an as working with a lot of uh sound design and a lot of special effects the same thing stuck out with me the first time i watched it which was a lot of the the composition and the particularly the way they do um engagements and action and all that kind of stuff really really resonated with me um just a whole lot more than most movies do um because if you compare it to i think danger close of the same year um it it's miles i don't know i don't know it just felt a whole a whole lot better well felt better well that's not even a sentence felt more well done than than danger close in the sense of the way they were doing you know um engagements and artill or and you know mortars and all the whole thing it just it just did, did something a whole lot better so um but i'll pass it off to i guess brian and then we'll go down the circle sure yeah so i agree with nate you know i liked it a lot better the second time than the first time um i just noticed a lot more things that i didn't um i still you know noticed the things i didn't like in the first one like the mood just being very um or the taliban in this case you know just being very uh I don't know, run into guns and things, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, yeah, I didn't like that aspect of it, but, um, no, it was, uh, it was great to see a second time around and, um, they do a good job of depicting just not a normal tour in Afghanistan. Cause obviously it wasn't, <laughs> you know, but just, uh, a, a good general gist of what the military is like overseas. And, um, it's really an okay movie until the, you know, the fighting starts and then it turns to a great movie in my opinion. Um, and they just do a good job at just trying to nail every aspect of it. So no, really uh, high marks for me in this one. And this is also the, um, most recent conflict we've reviewed. And now that's strange to say, but you know, 2009, yep. cause we've been doing a lot of like, you know, mid century, you know, 20th century stuff, world war one, whatever. So it's interesting to, you know, um, Lebanon, that was the you know with the whole uh, waltz with Bashir, I think that yep. was the most recent um, you know one right, we talked yeah. about. Well, so. We also did we also did the uh, Balkan Wars. Oh so yeah, 90, well yep. yeah the Balkans you know it's a little different as far as like you, you know the the conflict wise, but um, 
you know, plate carriers yeah. and everything that as far as that's concerned. Yeah. But yeah. um yeah, you know, it's uh it's interesting to look at, you know, things that happened while I was in school. <laughs> And you know, right. while you were alive. Oh God! So. You say in school, Jesus Christ, dude! I was out of, I was, I was graduated <laughs> at that point, man. Well, Mike, I, I'll let you talk. But where were you when this was, uh, you know, happening? You know, I was in Iraq when that happened. <laughs> uh, October third. Um, that was two days before I went on leave. Finally, after being in Iraq since you know fucking May, and I was so excited. And then we got the news of this happening, like right after it happened and it was like uh oh and we actually got rocketed that night on on october 4th like the night before i left we got rocketed and i think two or three people got killed where i was and i'm like what's going on is this just heating up as i'm leaving to go on leave what the fuck is going on and so it was very weird it's very surreal to like hear about this and then not really think much of it until i saw the film and i was like oh okay so a film about modern day military kind of uh, lingo and equipment and all that shit. And as far as the film's concerned, the way I saw it, the guys had IOTVs on, they had plate carriers, some of them. Um, and the lingo was not the usual lingo you'd see in a film. It was more realistic and more kind of like what I was used to of like saying fuck every other word or fucking this, fucking that, fucking, fucking, fuck, 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 you know, this and that. It really, it really was. And there were some things I was like, yeah, maybe not. But like the writing was not as terrible as I thought it was. I went into this thinking it was going to be just a absolute piece of shit. Was this your first I time not, seeing it? Yeah. yeah, I was going to say. Is, is no, no, no. I, I, I saw it before. I we'll, we'll get into that story later. I saw it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I saw it in 2020 about a month and a half before I started talking to Chris. And we'll, so we'll get to that. But, um, and, uh, so I watched it and I was like, okay, interesting. You know, they were in UCP and all that shit. And we heard about that and blah, blah, blah. And there was some shit in the film where I was like, yeah, it's fucking written in kind of dumb, but like whatever. And then, yeah, I wasn't there too. Like the thing is I was in Iraq. I wasn't in Afghanistan. It's a very different experience. As you can see in the film, a lot of guys that had been to Iraq that went to Afghanistan and were in this, shitty situation where like okay i had to adapt and whatever and um overall the writing was not as bad as i thought it was gonna be the gear was actually okay and the way that people communicate in like kind of the shitty ways that the u.s sets up any kind of fucking outpost or base or whatever that was decent in my opinion um the weaponry decent effects eh? because i've seen these guns fire in real life yeah they're using blanks and special effects i get that but it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be initially that was my reaction so chris <coughs> yeah chris where were you when all this happened <laughs> <laughs> were you just getting out of high oh, school man. yeah i was like what did i do what why <laughs> man why am i here now, i appreciate <laughs> that's what happens when you get that's what happens when you get f's in the in history, oh man right? yeah you know, like... <laughs> to to totally didn't pay attention in school didn't didn't care <laughs> and uh but no i, I appreciate y'all having me on here um um as far as as far as the movie uh you know i'm where I was there and I know the true story. Uh, I kind of have a lot of issues with it as far as uh, what story it told. Um, right. Some of the, I guess like the major stuff is in there and uh, they kind of blended uh, multiple deployments and stuff like that together. And, uh, you know, and I know it's Hollywood. They gotta, they gotta do certain things, but uh, that's, that's the stuff that bugs me about it. But other than that, I thought it was an okay movie. I thought, you know, um, uh, it wasn't a horrible movie at all. And one, right, one right. thing I, you know, and that's what I was worried about. I was like, man, I just hope it's not just completely just awful, you know, but it does. Michael Bay gas. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> exactly. Something like that. But, uh, I, I think that, uh, um, to what he did, uh, what they did was, uh, the fallen guys are, are some of the, uh, the main characters, which I think is awesome. Uh, um, but, uh, 
Um, I just, as far as, I, I just feel like the, the true story is a little bit, a little bit better. You know, uh, it's got a lot more, um, heroism in it. It's, uh, the bravery, the, just the crazy, it, even, not even that, just the craziness I've seen. There's just a lot of stuff in that they just didn't put it in. And they didn't really talk to my platoon too much about that part because I guess it was Ty Carter and other people, but, uh. Uh, right. I, I like that it gets the word out there. Uh, I, I like that too about it. It gets the word about the battle out there, and we get to talk about it. Yeah, I mean that that's that's the funny thing. It's like you know you you think it's talk about. It's like I remember hearing about this engagement in '09. I was I was I was a year later graduating high school than most people. Most people graduate at eighteen. I was graduating just shy of nineteen, and so that would have been that year. And um, I remember that being over the news because I was very interested in like world, you know, world, like the ongoings of the world and all that kind of stuff, especially particularly Afghanistan and military conflicts, because I'm a huge history nerd for World War Two mainly. And so this was like, you know, the war going around, you know, our generation. So it's something I was always kind of like, you know, eyeballing up. And so I, I, you know, Mike B and I were talking about that. It's like, I remember when it happens. Not a lot of people can say that. Like when it's like, when do you remember when it was happening? But like, I weirdly, I remember it being a, a thing that was on my radar. And the one thing, I guess the one, one of the main questions I actually really wanted to ask you, it's been the most dying question. And I know you've probably have been asked this multiple times, but is, does the depiction of the Valley when those guys get out after they get out during the night and they come and you walk out and it's daytime, is that depiction of that valley true? Um, of how deep and how high is that, or is that overly Hollywooded in that sense of just over over fishing that 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 peak? Because that was something that really blew my mind. Mm -hmm. Was like how how to how they really to get that across on film to get that kind of like to get the aspect of a deep basin like that. Yeah, that blew my mind. How they actually visually nailed that, and my curiosity is, was it really? that deep in that sense um <clears throat> short answer yeah it was it was i would yeah. almost uh, say that the mountains were closer to us we didn't have even that much standoff distance between the mountains half of our cop was I, I wouldn't say half of it maybe like a quarter of it and definitely the mortar pit was in like on the base of the mountain when the range was right you know? yeah so it's it, it was even steeper the river was way closer <laughs> it was uh when I, I remember, uh, yeah, I remember landing, and uh, when we got out, and it was a Chinook. Uh, we did not land in the daytime. I think that was in the movie. I can't. There, there were certain moments I would be like, "Well, they're burning shit at nighttime, or you know, stuff like that." You're, you're not going <laughs> to do that. that up too, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to do shit like that. Like, uh, you're not going to land. Like, and I'm not. I'm not talking crap about uh, helicopter pilots. I'm just being realistic. Where. They don't want to fly in the daytime because it's just more opportunity for them to get shot and killed. And, um, you know, so things like that bug me. And uh, uh, but it, it's luckily we can talk about it and, and kind of set some of that stuff straight. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's kind of, <laughs> it, it's kind of funny because you, you had mentioned that. And it, in the beginning of the movie, they say, oh, we're flying at night because they we we're going to get shot down yeah. if we go through the daytime. They don't want to fly. And then, and then like you just said, they come in during the right. daytime. It's like, <laughs> what? or maybe they were leaving. I can't remember. I watched it earlier today, right, yeah, but I yeah. just can't remember everything. Uh, uh, but uh, it was, it's just stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. It, it, well, I guess we can dive in more into it, but yeah, it was definitely, well, uh, well, yeah. definitely real close. Yeah. Couldn't see the, the train was awful. Um, yeah. Could, um, cause, cause it, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I want to make sure I don't interrupt you. No, you're so, fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just, uh, but I mean, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to brag, but I was just, I was good at spotting the enemy. I could find them. They, they would hide in crevices and behind rocks, you know, no shit, but you know, it's just, you, you got to watch. And they were, they were very, uh, um, you know, it's, it's their home. They, they know how to get around. They can get what would take me, you know, maybe five minutes they could get up there in one minute. It's and they're not big people. They're small and they're right. skinny. They're not carrying much. They leave their stuff out there. Um, you know, ton, a million places to hide and snipe, and we would get sniped at constantly, constantly. Yeah. 
So kind of what Brian was talking about earlier is um, he had a problem with, and I, I, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but like you, what you're kind of describing is kind of uh, confirming his disbelief is like those guys didn't just like do the the Chinese like wave charges like in Korea, right? They were very like methodical yeah. or, you know, more like they knew that you guys had beads on them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so they're not just going to be doing this human wave out in the open. No. No, and they like they portrayed in the film. No, not like that. No, they now I'll be. There was a couple of times I think what it, and all it was is I think they just seen an opening, and they 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 wanted to capitalize on it, and it was just there was you know one of us to stop to stop it, and there there's a couple of times I've seen stuff like that. They I, and I've said this in other interviews or whatever. It seemed like some of them were trained, and some of them were not trained at all. Um, you know, some of them I'm, I'm sure were just like, Hey motherfucker, we're going to go, we're going to go kill these bastards. You want to come with us? I was like, yeah, yeah. Don't kill me. I'll go with you. You know, maybe something like that. I don't know. Uh, you know, they probably want us gone too. And it was a lot of, uh, the ANA, uh, the ANA turned on us. Uh, we engaged ANA soldiers and ASG soldiers that turned on us. Uh, so, uh, Yeah. Yeah, it, we dealt with the same kind of like a uh, turncoat shit in Iraq. Um, uh, one of the times that I've told you about this, Chris. No, well, I, I, yeah, and what, one of the times that a, a rocket got really close to fucking hitting me and like just about took me out. If they would have armed it, you fuckers, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> but it, uh, they, they actually didn't. They didn't pull the army thing. They were so desperate Somewhere to set this 107 Iraq. rocket up. Yeah, and. Um, but anyway, so when I went into the bunker, like once I realized that we were getting IDF, I went to the bunker and there was guys already, there was Iraqi soldiers in there with their gear on already. And I'm like, you guys have had five seconds to react and you guys were sitting in here with your fucking gear on. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, you know, different theaters, but like same kind of experiences, like guys turning Guys that you thought you could trust, even right. though you could get a feeling. What'd you think, Chris? Like, could you get a read on some of those guys, the NA guys? Like, you were like, this guy is actually legit, or this guy's kind of, yeah. Do you ever get a read on that? Um, I'll tell you this one story. Um, man, I can't, I can't remember exactly what was going on, but I needed an interpreter. And uh, Sergeant Kirk looked at me and he said, "Jones, go to, the, go to where they stay and get one of those motherfuckers and bring them out here." So I. I went out there and I, 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 we radio, they have a radio, I, I think, and none of them would come, so that's why I went out there. I went in there and I was like, hey, I need a turp. One of you guys come with me. And like fucking no one moved. Um, <laughs> so I go back and I'm like, they're not moving. And he, Sergeant Kirk looked at me and he said, you fucking make them move. Um, so I went back in there and I just busted the door open and I just screamed at the top of my lungs. I said, you motherfuckers. I said, somebody, and he's like, he was he was half getting dressed. He's like, I'm coming, man. I'm coming. Just chill. And I was like, all right, mother. You know, and I, I don't remember what I said to him. But uh, but I'll be honest with you. I did not trust any one of them. Uh, just me personally. I, 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 I nope. did not. Tr and, and people, in, even in my platoon, would be like, Jones, give them a chance. And uh, no, I, I don't trust these people. Um, and yeah. And I seen him taking pictures. Like uh, I seen that where Sergeant Kirk uh, in the movie, the guy's taking yep. a picture. Well, I, I seen a motherfucker uh, tell like uh, he was t the ASG came up to him, or no, it was a uh, it was like a worker or somebody. Yeah, he was a worker, and he came up to a guy that would come another worker that would leave the cop, and 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 come back on, and they were talking. And he pointed to my my uh, my other platoon's element that just went on a dismounted mission, and he literally followed the trail, showed him exactly. Oh man, I just knocked my shit out. Uh, <laughs> showed You're him, good. Uh, Keep going. Showed him exactly where they were uh, walking on the ridge line, and I said, uh, "Man, this pisses me off." Uh, so I got in his ass, and uh, I said, "I remember you, motherfucker." And he was an ASG guy. Now I remember that was telling a worker that, right? Okay, so, so I go and I tell I can't remember which S shop it is that does intelligence, 
and I told them and my chain of command told them. And, uh, you know, so there was just shit like that constantly. They were constantly snitching on us. They would steal tools. Uh, there was a, there was this guy, I'm sure you've, if you read the books, I'm sure he's in there or interviews. He's, they called him the sugar man and he worked in the cafeteria and all he would do is just like, give me your sugar. I don't know if he'd sell the shit or, or, or what do you do with it? But it's just, they just, they're always trying to fuck you. That's just my opinion. So, so he, he, hmm. He stole the sugar, like he would steal like, sugar. Like, he like, if if I remember having it in a packet, and he'd be like sugar, <laughs> sugar, sugar, and it'd just be like uh, no, like 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 sweet, like sweet and low for coffee. Like you'd even take that right, kind of stuff, exactly. Or? Yeah, just some like <laughs> yeah, and uh, I remember I'd always be like no, fuck you, and I'd put it in a trash can, <laughs> and. Uh, I was just, I was so savage. I was so savage. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that was just kind of how. No sugar for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no good. Uh, no sugar. But uh, we, m- my platoon was just, when I joined that platoon, we were just, and that's another thing I kind of want to talk about is the, the f- frat boy tickling bullshit. I mean, I just don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how to explain how hard. And how tough and how dangerous you have to be to be in Ripple Tune. Like, uh, these guys were not, they were not like that. They, they were very calm. Like, right. I was in a platoon full of killers. Like, um, they, these these were not frat boy joke and tickle. No. Like, uh, the, 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 so the, the, the I love that, you, the you I were... love you man and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Like, that, that whole kind of, like, frat party before, like, like no oh yeah and like drink fuck. drinking on post right. dude you you want to get an article 15 and get fucked in your ass and 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 and, <laughs> and, and pull guard for 24 hours yeah. no you're not going to drink during your deployment you moron right and so um listeners should also realize this is a cav platoon correct yes and you were a lot or you were infantry i am infantry yeah they attach uh, 361 is what they right. call combined arms. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, yeah, so you're in a platoon with guys that uh, a lot of them had experience, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so you get there as a PFC fresh off the fucking boat. Oh, yeah, brother. You know it. Yeah. As an 11 Bravo. Yeah. And then you get thrown to this Cav platoon. Mm-hmm. How'd that go? Brother. About all, it's like I see that you're building that up. Yes, that yep. I, I got I got messed with a lot. I got uh, fucked with a lot, but I knew that I knew that going in because that's how the military is. It's 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 where hard men are. It's it's we got to do this, and uh, I want to be a part of their platoon. They don't necessarily need me. You know what I mean? Like it's mm-hmm. I, I got to prove myself, and uh, I got to. Uh, I got, I didn't get too much. I got a little bit of respect. Then we deployed. And when we were in combat, I got a lot of respect. And um, you got to prove it. Um, and that's what Ripple Tune was about. And uh, I just, it, no offense to the movie. I know, you know, like it's Hollywood and all that shit. And they, they don't have any of us to go off of how it was like, maybe. Um but well, don't don't worry about don't worry about getting offense to Hollywood. We've done plenty of oh, yeah, yeah. podcasts so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. You should listen uh, to a don't shit hold back. Yeah, yeah, you should listen to a shit on Midway. So you know that's oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you, know, like, you uh, yeah. yeah. You, were, you were, here's the thing: is you were there. Those guys that, weren't. Mm-hmm. It just yeah. It's it's whatever you think. It's like if you if you want to shit on the film because they got something wrong. Yeah, go for it because it's, it's constructive criticism. Yeah, absolutely. And um, um, so yeah. But I do appreciate things about it, like I said. So it it's it's kind of like uh, I just have a lot of mixed feelings about it. And uh, so, what what are yeah. what are some things you appreciate about it? Uh, number one, that uh, the the fallen my fallen brothers, man, they 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 have them as like kind of main roles. I love that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I I believe that they help the families out with that. I, at least I hope so. Um, but uh, those guys were just so, and uh, you know. They have us as a, all as a platoon. We were two platoons. There was three platoons total, and there was two platoons there and a headquarters platoon. 
So like Ty Carter and people like that, they weren't even in my platoon. We 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 didn't even talk to them. They don't even know how uh, Sergeant Martin was in headquarters. They don't even know how we acted. I mean, besides shit, seeing us out, you know, they they, they don't know how they, we run our platoon or anything like that. And uh, you know, it's just stuff like that. I'm like, you could have you could have asked somebody, I guess. No, that's that's 100 valid, and that's what a lot of things, especially if you're going to do something that's this recent with people who are still alive and well, mm-hmm. they went through it, um, and you have easy access to them through networking. Why would you not ask them? Why would you not get every account? Well, I got a reason you for possibly that. could. I I, I know so. the reason, and it's uh, and the way I'll explain it is just because there's just at the top. There's multiple people who that were there. There's people that served at this outpost before it was attacked on October 3rd that want their voices heard. Um, you know, uh, Blue Platoon has their version headquarters and everybody in between. And I think that Red Platoon, we wanted our story and that Outpo- the outpost and Jake Tapper just wasn't it. So we just didn't really, ass- I can't really hate on too much because we didn't associate ourselves with them because there was kind of like a, a line drawn almost in, in the sand, like, well, you're either with this side or you're with your platoon and brother, I'm going to be with my platoon until I'm dead. And, um, so they, they did their thing and, uh, you know, it, it, it like I said, yeah. it gets the word out there. But it really just came down to who's telling what story, and we just weren't involved. That's the problem with legacy. Yep. You know, I mean, when you have so many people that were involved, is that what story do you tell? Because we all have biases at the end of the day. Right. You know, there's all things that were like, well, no, this happened this way, this happened that way. You know, I used to work at a few museums and interview a lot of vets and I, you know, especially World War II veterans when they were starting to age and they would fight over the stupidest stuff Yeah. that, you know, they were all wrong. <laughs> right. You know, so that's the thing. Uh, it's just remembering it. So yeah, you know, if you talk to two people out of 80, then obviously, you know, you're, you're not going to hear everybody's right. voice, but you know, and, and you, just unfortunately the way it goes. Yeah. And you pick, uh, you know, obviously it was, uh, Jake Tapper wrote that book and, you know, he chose to go with whoever he wanted to go with. And that's, it just is what it is. That doesn't mean, uh, you know, like we're saying, I'm going to get my word out there, my truth, what I've seen, my opinion. And, you know, a lot of people are interested in that. People daily, you know, when they find out I was there, uh, they ask me, you know, they're just, how is this? How did that happen? I'll tell them about Red Platoon. Even the Outpost book is different than the movie. So, you know, I would say read read uh, the books as well because they give you a lot of insight and stories and uh, a lot of brave like situations and stuff, uh, crazy situations. So, you know, um, still have it. Oh man, yeah, it. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all right. I I usually listen to books, so it's all right. <laughs> yeah, I just sit down and yep. fucking read this thing one of these days. But yeah, I still have it. It's right there. You, you know, it's it's funny. It's funny how you, you you talked about you know going with with a certain resource or a book, and it kind of calls back to when we had um, uh, Sergeant York. Is J- J- I know James. His, I know his first oh, you name. You can fuck his name up now. No, is it James Gregory? Because I keep thinking I need to add yeah, a Mick to it or something. Okay, it's yeah, James, James Gregory. I know his name. name. I just want to make sure I didn't mm-hmm. have a stroke and say Gregory. Um, well, yeah. uh, J- when James was on about you know citing about you know how the 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 kind of the the resource or the source that a lot of the uh, Sergeant York mythology and or you know. I say mythology in quotation marks, but like more of like, you know, they, they pulled it from a certain resource, from a certain book, from a certain author. And they went with that story. I got you. And then Hollywood took it and rolled it into something exactly. new entirely on top of it. And I, I see a lot of similarity with that a little bit mm-hmm. with kind of what you're saying, where it's like, you know, they went with a source and then Hollywood, then Hollywooded it. And then it puts out that story. So then you have this kind of, you know, 
not necessarily wrong, but this portray this portrayal that doesn't necessarily encompass the whole entire story. And then you add Hollywood's, you know, bro hugging out and burning shitters at night and saying, fuck <laughs> yeah. you, Taliban. Do you have night vision? Exactly. You know, like, you know, mm. like that kind of stuff. So, you know, like that, that's that I kind of hear some similarities with that, which is kind of funny because that's World War One. Right. Exactly. You know, and then and then you think of it to now it's like, hmm. Nothing's really changed there, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> gobble, gobble, gobble. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I've, t- <laughs> I've talked to Rosha. He's. Uh, I won't go into detail what he's got going on, but uh, we we got some uh, things that we're trying to work on. But uh, I talked to this guy. He was a producer and a writer, and he's from Hollywood. And he's pretty frank. He's a nice guy. He was pretty frank with me. He said, "Dude, they're all full of shit. Like, it, you know, it, it's just." <laughs> It, whatever sells, they think will put asses in seats and 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 and, and yeah. stuff like that. And, yeah. and and the worst and the worst part is it you know the the worst part about some aspects of the ho- of when when we say Hollywooded up you know with quotation marks it's like most of the time that decisions made by exactly what you said what's going to put asses in seats what's going to relate right. most to the population that they're trying to kind of you know showcase to and what's going to allow civilians to engage with that with that character development the most and what is what is the most civilian like thing of you know maybe 20 year olds at that time is frat boy attitude you know if you think of it like that it's like that's what they're going to try to sell to which because if you try to sell like the real life military life they'd be like this is boring as shit (laughs) because it's boring as shit until it's not you know what i mean like it's that immediate like you know boom boom you know it's not like let's let's show all day you know fuck there was you that and, and onion, burn shitters you know that like website the satire website they had like a call of duty that's like realistic and you know, oh, like, right. I drive a convoy yeah. around around <laughs> get yeah. there the paperwork's wrong drive back yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah and then like they have the dlc is like fixing humvees in germany for eight hours a day <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah yeah but nothing that's real out there so chris really quick question because i'm genuinely yes, curious sir. Um, no. <laughs> so in the, in the film, I know this might be Hollywood, but chin straps. What was your what was you guys' policy on chin straps? <laughs> That's another thing I was going to. I'm so glad you brought that up because, <laughs> dude, if if we didn't have our chin strap on or our hip, I see, we would get fucked up, man. You would get yes, it, yes. That's why I'm asking you. There's yeah. nowhere on the on that cop. You would not have your fucking helmet on. Like it, it's, it man, so fucking stupid. So, some of that stuff. I was like, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you, that's what I was asking. Cause like, yeah, I know it was like, oh, you think you're fucking John Wayne? Oh, okay, fucking put your fucking put your fucking cape on. Put your put your strap on. You're gonna wear that fucker everywhere. Even though when you don't need it, you're gonna wear it to bed. You're gonna, you, this is how your punishment is going. Absolutely, be. you're gonna wear it twenty four. You know, and you know what? We're just gonna add yep. a two forty to it on it with a with a string for your sling for the five fifty cord. One exactly one strand of five fifty cord. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that that's what I was asked. That that must have been a Hollywood bullshit. It because was. I, yeah. Fucking every time I see that shit, especially in modern films, even like Desert Storm on. Man, it's like, are you John Wayne? Come here, got something for you, bud. Well, your 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 K pot's not going to stay on if you don't have that damn chin strap Correct. on, you fucking moron. So, like, if if you're running around, Mister Hero shots, like your your helmet's probably not going to stay on your head. We had a guy, I won't say his name, but he lost his helmet. We were on a well, I wasn't on the mission, but they were on a mission outside the wire. And his fucking helmet, uh, I don't know what he was doing. And it fell down the mountain. And they tried to find it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was on I was on stand to, you know, when you got some spare time, they're, you know, they're like, well, why don't you go pull guard? Uh, so yep. I was pulling guard and I was like, all right, I'm watching my dudes here. You know, I, and I count them when they come in. And I was like, all right, I got a helmet here, a helmet there, got a helmet here. And I was like, that guy ain't got a fucking helmet. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Whoops. Dude, what happened? Dude, he got fucked up. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, God bless his heart. Good guy though. He was just, God bless his heart. <laughs> that was the walk of did shame. Did you get I charged was... for that? Yes, he did. If, if yep, if, yep, yep. If, Three hundred and eighty bucks. If, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I ever seen a, a a long face in my life, man, that was him, brother. He's he's fucking <laughs> eight. Yeah. 
And, you, and we, everybody knows why he lost his helmet. Everybody knows exactly why. They hit a fucking bump. Yep. He didn't have his fucking K-pot strapped, yep. and it fucking went off the edge of... Yeah, See you exactly. Later. Yep. Yep. There, yeah, right. it's, we'll see you in a fire fight. It's still it's, there to this day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's well, somebody, that, yeah. That, that that's the funny thing, you know. It, it to compare it to just because I'm 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 a huge I, I've said for like I'm the big war we're well, all big World War Two nerds, but mm. uh, I I mainly focus on 29th Infantry for World War Two, and one of the things that the 29th Infantry during World War Two is very known for is unfortunately for Geardhart, which he was the only he was like the only like division leader that was very adamant about having chin straps on right. everyone during world war ii is kind of like, like put it around their health they put it on the back or they just loose gearhard was like you must have this completely on your mm-hmm. chin at all times otherwise i will fuck you up yep. and i remember that being like a huge thing with the 29th and, the, and like i'll come to a 29th vet and and i'll be like so the chin strap and he's like fuck that like eight year olds going like fuck that shit it was so awful he's like we don't have it loose and, yep. then, and then you see a captain come around you're like <laughs> you know like trying to like, it up. Like, yeah, yeah. like super fast but like i just it's funny you say that but you know it's different time different era but it was just funny you're like chin strap buckled i'm thinking oh, to myself dude, i'm like right. oh man well Gear, now really Gear no hard would be like it's a four seventy five years chin strap yeah. yeah it's a four point chin strap with a chin cup on it like right versus not the two point, no, versus bad. the two point right. linen strap with the little right you know uh, yeah dude, we, we so, clip. go ahead no go no, ahead no, go well, ahead, i was just gonna say we were in a smoke pit at keating and uh you know my sergeants come out and they smoke in the pit with us you know pitch black and and uh, we're all smoking cigarettes and uh it was my, my sergeant stan and Sergeant Stan uh, uh, didn't have his K-Pod on. You know, of course, we're in a ditch, but, you know, you want to be outside, you want to have it on. And yeah. he, he just left it inside, or I think it was right next to him or something. Yeah. And uh, he uh, he was like, uh, we were just talking, and all of a sudden we seen First Sergeant walking around. And First Sergeant's like, motherfucker, you better have that helmet on. And he came down there. And he looked at us and he was like, y'all, y'all doing all right? Y'all playing game box? You know, just like, yeah, we're just <laughs> hanging out for a sergeant. You know, and he fucking loved my country ass for some reason. And uh, he, he was, Weird. Your impression of him doesn't sound anything similar to your original accent. So I can't imagine off. why. Yeah, he's just. <laughs> can't imagine why. Yeah, he was like, uh, uh, I, he's more like George Bush. Uh, uh, let me say. I'd have to practice. Texan, yeah, flatter. Yeah, he's hey, from Texas. He's like, yeah, he's like, uh, he's like, hey, looks like, uh, looks like you uh, sniffed a fart in your face today. That way, <laughs> you know, he's, oh, God he, he's damn. like that. And, oh, yeah, yeah, and he walked down oh, there. The worst. He's a great guy though. First Sergeant Burton was great, <laughs> but he's like, he's like, hey, he's like, hey, uh, uh, hey, you, what that ca- who, who ain't got that K-pot on? And uh. He did start standing. It's just like he literally just picked his cape on and put it on his head. Didn't even strap it. Didn't say nothing. And he was like, he's like, hey, I said, who was that? And I was like, dog, I'm going to take one for a team right now. This is my grenade moment. And I said, oh, that's me, first sergeant. <laughs> and I smoke. And he's like, oh, Jonesy, you dumb son of a bitch. Get your fucking cape on and keep it on. And I was just like, yeah, roger that, first sergeant. I'm stupid. <laughs> You know, it's just like, yeah, it's like, yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I got brownie points Fuck for that a. one. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. So that that that, that answers that question. Because yeah, I just I you know as a because again like for the people that were listening, um, uh, Chris and I we were in at the same time. We were deployed around the same time. Two thousand nine, all that shit. We weren't in the same unit. Or he was active duty. I was a nasty girl, aka National Guard. Uh, but like these standards were still like in an infantry unit or a combat arms, like a, you know, combined arms, cab scouts, all that shit. Uh, There are certain standards that are, that are enforced and the chin straps, my God, my fucking cuffs on my goddamn sleeves were enforced, (laughs) you know, like can't roll them up. You motherfucker. Yeah. You know, that kind of shit. But like, um, and then, yeah, my next note that I actually wrote, I don't have a lot of these, burning shit at night in the film it's like what in the fuck are you thinking as a producer writer director what are what the fuck what are you doing right. here it's just like that's that's 
I mean, is it is it not self explanatory? That's what I thought. I was like, no one, no one was sitting around that edit room and being like, hey, so, wait, hey, so this don't make no sense. Like it, it's it's <laughs> right. We're we're giving our position on, dude. If I smoked a cigarette on guard, oh, at yeah. nighttime, they they would kill me. Like uh, we had a guy get busted. That's what without an eye. That's what dip is made for. You're right. And uh, we had a <laughs> we had a guy. Uh, he got busted with an iPod on guard. Oh, I'm not gonna say oh. who he is. I should say who he is because no, it's, it's, fine. it's hilarious. It's fine. But uh, <laughs> he is he he's a friend of ours. But he man he he got fucked. Congressional Medal of iPod. No, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, the I never seen like uh, first off, man. He got uh, he got a talking to. I'll just put it that way. And then uh, <laughs> the way they smoked him, and when I say smoke, I mean they exercised him until he barfs and they oh, just keep yeah. going. They, I mean, like they the shit. He, I mean, he did it for days. Um, oh. I mean, but if you think about this, like they could have snuck up on us. You know, you can't hear shit. You're focusing on your fucking yeah. stupid iPod. Um, you know, you could have got us killed, man. But uh, Kid Rock got me killed. Yes. You know, like, it's not worth it. Ball with the ball, man. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, okay. Duty is very so, important. <laughs> oh, it, it is. And that's the thing is like, mm-hmm. even like, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it was always in the infantry uh, wide, you know, in combat arms. It's like no smoking at night. Like, that's it. Yeah. That's why you see a lot of guys dipping or chewing, uh, because you can do it day round. It Unless you're matter. smoking hash, because you have a uh, <laughs> you you have oh. a narcotic problem. <laughs> so how, you got the first well, one too. Yeah. How was the accuracy of that, Chris? You know, um, I'll be honest with you, Faulkner. That did happen, uh, but uh Faulkner was the man uh he 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 was a g i like partying with Faulkner. uh he uh <laughs> yeah uh I'm sure exactly yeah. he, he was the man uh he just in my opinion he'd been to iraq i think like once or twice he'd been shot he literally got shot in the arm the same place he got shot in iraq and damn and uh when i joined uh you know like we were kind of talking about it, it was it, fucking so hard to be in the military they were just eating people alive just you know uh when i first got to red platoon there was a guy on suicide watch uh threatening to blow his fucking yeah. brains out and uh we we had to uh watch him and uh he he even asked me <laughs> i seen him randomly one day he's like you need a ride to the grocery store and i was like nah i'm all right you you <laughs> i'll get a taxi uh <laughs> but, uh, he, that's what people used to take before uber yeah just, i'll just call a taxi you're a good man yeah uh, but he uh i also had this guy's room he was a uh he was a uh he was a murderer and uh he uh i forget his name but uh he i had this room when i first got it i noticed that there's this stuff on the outside of the door it was piss. People were pissing on this door. I was like, damn, they must really hate this guy. That And so I go in there, and then the guy who's my roommate tells me who it was. I was like, oh, my God. And uh, I remember one time I was, I was, I cleaned this shit, and uh, I was, uh, it was, it was late at night. I think I was playing PlayStation or something, and uh, I heard someone outside my door. I was like, this and I open the door and it's this guy and he's getting ready to piss on my fucking door and I was like what are you doing and he was like oh man I thought this is where that man I wish I could remember his fucking name but he was like he's like this is where the, the murderer is at and I was like well he don't live here no more stop pissing on my fucking door I'm sick of cleaning I'm like uh, I'm right. living in a barracks <laughs> but uh, on my fucking door, man, it was crazy. I, you know, and I'm telling you, it was savage. Yeah. So, 
fucking sad. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. that's like that's like when that's like college dorm romantics almost. Oh right, like, the yeah, dude it, keeps it's, coming back. It's like projects, bro. Door. It's like right, right. Oh yeah, yeah. it's like dorm mixed yeah. with pro. I, you you want to hear another story about the pro, the project? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Whatever <laughs> so you want to tell, man. So yeah, so maybe I was partying and I was coming in to post late, and I, I get to my parking lot. And there's it's two sections, right? So I pull into the other section. I'm driving a V6 97 Camaro. It's sweet. T-tops, baby. And uh, I pulled in there and uh, I got out. And I was walk. I was walking to the next set of uh, uh, parking lot there. And I seen a big puddle. And I was like, man, what is this? I said, somebody leaking oil or something? Or, you know. So I got my uh, light out and I was looking at it. I was like, man, that looks like blood. And I looked closer and it was blood. And I was like, oh, man. So I'm 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 following it and like it's like I'm just taking a trip with blood, you know. I'm just it's going the same way I am. <laughs> so I'm like following. I got my light, you know. I'm looking at it and stuff. I go into the barracks. It's three stories. So I go to the uh, first level and you can see where he stopped and he fucking bled out and he's got his, like his handprints all over the fucking wall, you know. Like you can see where his sneakers were on the fucking floor and so like he, I'm like I'm like holy shit, let me. I need to find this guy, right? You know, so like I follow the blood trail and it goes all the way to the second floor. And I go out and I follow it to this door and I'm banging on the door. I'm, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be a fucking hero. Like, they're gonna, you know, like all this shit. I'm like, man, right, let me save his life. And uh, so I'm knocking on this door and this guy down the hall busts open. And he said, he was an older gentleman. I can tell you he's probably like in his <laughs> late thirties. He's like, what the fuck is going on? And I was like, uh, I said, uh, dude, there's this guy. I was, there's this guy bleeding out, man. And he, I see he led right here. And he was like, he was like, what number is it? And I was like, I looked at it, I was like, it's, you know, whatever. And he was like, oh, don't worry about that guy. He does that shit all the time. And I was like, and he just walked back inside, closed the door. And I was like, all right, man. I'll just, uh, I'll just go about my business. <laughs> uh, Jesus yeah, Christ. He just does that all the time. What do you do after that? Like get a McFlurry? You know? Uh, like serial killer. I went to, I don't even know what, I, I think I went and played PlayStation or something and just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fuck it, why not? Uh, when I woke up the next morning, you get, they were in there mopping all the blood in the hallway. I was like, yeah, dude. He, I tried to save his life. Is he dead? And they were like, we don't know. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> It's just and, let this one go, you know? Like, bro, I got to them all. Don't worry, he does it all the time. Don't worry. Yeah, I was like, man, all right. He does that when there's a full moon. You just got to keep your door locked. Right. You know, like, my man. Yeah, just getting. I hope, it, oh. hope he plugged it. Oh. <laughs> oh, Christ. You can cut through oh. anything with a sawzall. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring us back to the film for a bit, then we can bullshit a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, um, sorry man. Was... <laughs> no, 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 don't live for a You don't even know how many times we've gotten off track just ourselves. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Oh yeah. fuck, yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 just we have a whole it, five minute like soundbite of Mike talking about like, well, I'm a Jedi <laughs> and you are a Padawan. <laughs> like, yeah, it's... we have some great tangents. So yeah, That's awesome. oh, I'm a Jedi master. Talk. By the way, not, not we know we don't need another five minutes of that. Nate um, already has that. So, so all right, the bottom of my notes that I took. Um, so in this film, when the you know shit's hitting the fan and everything, and then um, Romache is like, "Hey Jones, um, blah blah blah," and then you're like, "Oh, I got his M4," and then you go up into a 240 nest. Mm-hmm. How did that actually happen? Okay. Um, yeah. Man. I'm sorry. I get a little deep right here because, man, that was. Uh, so we'll come out of it. But yeah, I was, I was just curious because it was like, it seemed like all of a sudden you were there and then like, bam, you grabbed the guy's M4, went up to 240 Nest, and then you got, well, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, so I was at a position and it was completely falling apart. And we had uh, collapsed, me, Gregory, and Danley had collapsed back to our barracks because we had no radio and the enemy was in the wire and we were engaged on. And where we were at, just we couldn't hold it anymore. So we get back to the barracks room 
and um, were posted up. They told me to post up on a door. You know, Raz told me to kill anybody that come through the door. And that's when I was finally like, oh, it's like, you know, because I knew it was, it was heavy. I almost died, you know, multiple times. You know, but I just, I, that was like, I think the first time I was like, yeah, we're, I, I think, I think this is over, you know, like a deep, like, kind of like yeah. I'm having. Oh, yep. 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 So I was looking at the door yep. and uh, some things happened in there before I'm not going to talk about, but uh, uh, it's fine. They, uh, um, Roman Shea busted through the door. And there was 10 or 15 people in there, okay? And he said, I need a group of volunteers. And I don't know, I just, and this is what I was saying, it's like something in me, man, I just, uh, they killed my team leader. They're pissed, you know, just normally when I was in combat, they would just piss me the fuck off just shooting at me in general. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just pissed off, I'm mad, I, I, wanna, I wanna kill these fucking motherfuckers. And, when he asked for volunteers, I said, absolutely. I was the first one to stand up. Um, and Raz was already with him. Del Danley was already with him when he came in here and asked for volunteers. And I'm just going to say this, because my friend Gregory gets a bad rap in that movie. And, you know, sometimes, yeah, he, he might have dropped the ball one time, or maybe once or twice, but no one else in that room volunteered for anything. No one. I was the only one. And they said, we need a saw gunner. And I think that's why Greg might get brought up a lot because he's he had the saw kit. And at this point, I was just had an M4. Um, and I had, a, I, I don't remember what I did with my, I think it was in the floor actually. And um, they said, we need a saw gunner. And I said, I'll just take his, his kit. And they said, hell yeah, Jones, do that. And uh, so I did that. We go outside and we're in a huddle outside of our barracks in between the talk and our barracks. And they're having a conversation. And this is another, I'm, I'm not going to get into my feelings about these people. I'm not, it's all good. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to talk a, about decisions that. It's all good. Right. But um, we're standing there. Roman Shea says, okay, we're going to go. And it was just going to be me, him, Raz, and Delaney. Uh, or not Delaney, Danley. And then he seen Delaney had a uh, <clears throat> saw and he said, Delaney, come, would you care to come with us? And Delaney's like, yeah, I can come with you. And then he said, you. And he pointed at this man named Sergeant Miller, who I met uh, a couple of weeks before. Um, he, uh, uh, he said, you come with us. And uh, one day I'm I, one day I'm gonna give an honest. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be the bigger man and not. Not hate on people. I'm not. I'm not trying to take away from anybody's yep. experience. Yep. But there are times where I've I really felt like I was left by myself to die, and I had if if I didn't have faith in myself, if I didn't if I didn't stand up and fight we would we would be dead like it, it's just it's it's times but so we 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 move to the ammo supply point that's our main goal get the ammo supply point because if we don't have ammo we don't have anything and um we got there we set up we engaged guys on the comp they were all over the place i engaged guys 50 meters, 100 meters, 200 meters. And I'd, I'd been engaging people all day. Um, you know, I was, you know, when I was in the position before, I was just running out of ammo. And now I had a bunch of ammo. And I and I used it. And, um, yep. you know, Roman Shea seen what I was doing there. And he came up with another plan. He said, we're going to stretch out from here and go and try to get these guys. And, um, that's another thing he mentions in his book that I'm not going to get into that elements that were supposed to be there that were not there to help us. Um, so we were on our own and he left, he, I was there by myself and I had a guy with me, uh, for a little bit and he got shot in the arm. My buddy Danley, Sergeant Miller. I don't know what happened to him. He disappeared. And then, um, 
Delaney and um, Raz and Roe went and cleared the Shura building. And when we cleared the Shura building and we took back the ammo supply point, it kind of gave everybody a second wind. Like uh, mm -hmm. everybody kind of was, it was, uh, I think one of my friends told me, is like, you gave us hope, man. You, you gave us hope. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, they were kicking our fucking ass. Yep. Yeah. And even a little thing like that, you know, for that building, you've got that building, you go, well, we're not totally fucked. Right. We, we've still got a chance. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and then you guys go through, and this is that scene where in the film, so I'm trying to get uh, kind of lined up to the fact versus the Hollywood portrayal is, uh, you and Clint and the rest of those guys that were there somehow regrouped and you went and took over the 240 nest or was that just a part of the film that was not accurate? Um, so the 240 nest, you mean the Humvee where they were all uh, trapped? Is that what you're... No, 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 no. In the film, like, he, um, you guys are you guys are stacking. You guys are not stacking, but you guys are like kind of uh, moving along a building. Oh, I was, yeah, I got you. And he goes, Jones... Yeah. Go up there and help. Uh, I forgot the guy's name. I'm sorry. I was a lot of names to keep track of. Even real life, I'm bad at that. Um, it was Jones. Get over there and help him with that. And then shortly thereafter, it shows. What a, I see me the only Jones there, which is very fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's you know like a hundred I mean? of us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. like, really <laughs> Jones and this fucking whole entire cop? What the Dude, fuck? Dude, uh, 30th AD, Army? man, yeah. They were like, Jones Christopher, oh. Jones Brandon, Jones David, Jones, yeah. Yep, oh, fuck it, A. Yeah, and it's like, so, yeah, so I assume uh, when he says Jones, it's you. Yeah. You go up to this 240 nest, and you're helping him out, whoever was on 240, and then it was a nest. It wasn't a, it wasn't a gun truck. Mm -hmm. It was an actual nest in the film, mind you. And... And then the next scene, we kind of see you, and he says, Jones, get back to the aid station, because it looked like you were hit. That was Danley. In that film. Danley, okay. Yeah. I was the guy with the uh, the 240. Um, okay. So when he says, he says uh, Jones, stay here, and I think my character says, love the pressure or some shit. Danley got shot. Man. He should. So was this scene was this scene accurate for what happened? Yeah, yeah, it was decently accurate. Okay, okay, um, uh, okay, okay. As far as me going to the nest, yeah, uh, I was, st yeah. I, st <laughs> I stood there for a minute. Uh, you know, when, like I said, we engaged him on the cop before I actually went to that position. Yeah. We found out, and also too, that position had a blind spot to my right where the road curved with the cop. I couldn't see uh, anybody running up on me. So, yeah. dude, I, I couldn't tell you how many grenades I threw. You know, I could hear him. Yeah, that's what you told us on the stream. Yeah. And so, if you wouldn't mind, um, so it was at about that point or around this point in the battle, like when you're on the 240 nest and you realize, oh, there's a huge fucking blind spot. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. I have to reposition. Yeah. And, uh, well, I didn't get to reposition. I had to suck it up like a buttercup. You know, it was, uh, it, it, <laughs> it I, I, Romashay handed me three boxes of Martin, it was a Mark 19 cans and they were completely full of grenades and i swear to god i threw almost every single grenade like m67 grenades yeah. just for so the audience is clear like that's grenades. a lot of hand grenades if people don't know the size of grenades. yeah fucking bro like mark 19 can dude like <laughs> he, he dude uh i'd hear him running up and i just like break out oh my god you know it's like and uh just it, yeah i could i could get it i could be a little bit more anim animated but i'm not going to do it uh, I'll just I'll just say this: a, a lot of violence at that position. A lot of violence. I I did I did very violent things at that position. Um, yeah, right. Everybody was, and yeah. it's like so. But that that was in the film around that position, that mm -hmm. time right there. Yeah. Well, I'll be within that. Like, yeah, I'm the only one when I set up right there. I'm the only one. And that direction. Yep. That's it. Yep. I'm, and that was, I would switch. I'd have a, a, I had a Mark 48 looking up the river towards the, the mountains in the city. And then I had a saw that I could turn around and engage on the switchbacks and shoot them. Mm. And, um, right on. 
you know, so once we took that and we got a little turf there and we got into the routine, um, man, some crazy shit I've seen right there, boys. Uh, man. Yeah. Um, I seen an Apache, uh, helicopter just unload its whole shit onto probably like a dozen people. And it was just devastating. I can't. Yeah. It, it, it's very violent. It's very, yeah. this is why, um, <laughs> it's really funny. Like when, uh, you know, the old timers and never been to a war, you know, they go, what do you guys think? Oh, we should go to Ukraine. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm pretty fucking anti-war. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, most guys like yourself and guys that have been there, um, we're, we're pretty anti-war, you know, it's like, it's weird, right? Oh yeah. Because of the amount of violence, but, um, it's, Brian it's something question. that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, say something. So, you know, you see in the film that the battle is about 12 hours, um, if I'm not mistaken about over the course <clears throat> of the day. Um, you know, and they say that, you know, when you're in combat and in a situation like that, this time doesn't exist. You know, you're in, you're doing what you have to do to get to the next thing you have to do, you know, just you're surviving. Yeah. To you, how long did it feel like, you know, was it just like, holy fucking shit, you know, this like this colossal thing you just lived through or did it feel like it had time, you know? Um, I had no concept of No, it's strange. Yeah. Um, I was so, you know, and, and everybody, you know, this is what, I was just all over the place. I was literally all over the place. And I, I did not stop. I did not stop engaging the enemy in, in one form or another. Like it, it, I was constantly busy. I did, you know, the, the only times I had to think was, like I said, when I was in there and I was on the floor guarding that door, I was disgusted with myself. I don't want to die on the fucking floor. I want to die on my motherfucking feet and kill these bastards. I don't, I don't want to do this like this. And there was a, you know, there was a couple of times where I talked to God, but other than that, he was just running and gunning for me. And I really, it, I was just in my own zone, you know, especially after praying to God, I was just in my own zone. To kind of, to kind of bounce off Brian's question, I guess, cause I'm also very curious when you say you have no concept of time, meaning like you're not keeping track of it, obviously No, <laughs> it's, but it's like, does it feel like doing all those movements? Did some movements feel like, wow, like I'm on this position that felt like this, mm -hmm. or is it like, or was it like this position felt like an eternity, but this position felt really quick, or maybe you know the, the going back and forth was quick, but the rest of it, the engagement, pro you know, moving from position to position was quick, but maybe the placement was not. Was there anything like that, or was it more like it's just happening and that's it? Man, yeah, it was. It was more. Yeah. It was just happening, but maybe a little bit. There was uh, like I was when I was in the trench uh, behind the generator where Romache gets blown up in the movies behind this generator. Well, that's where I was because we were trying to cover fire for heart and those elements running up there to get mace and get ammo to them. And, you know, um, that position felt like I was there for a long time. And I probably was there for a long time. I was at um, the place we were just talking about, that, that 240 nest. I was there for a long time, too. I mean, like, it, it just, you know, it's kind of like you were saying, you know, it, it was just, it just is, it, it just was what it was. I was just moment to moment. It, it was, uh, you know, mainly just running and gunning, man. It, nothing really seemed, you know, it just kind of all meshed together at some point too. You know, it, it, it's, it, it was chaos. I say that constantly in interviews. I don't know how else to explain it. There's people screaming for their lives. There's, you know, there's languages I, I don't understand. I know they're screaming for their life. There's people that are being cowards and are running away and hiding. There's no leadership structure. There's no radios. There's no ammo. No one's bringing uh, the positions ammo. Um, the team leaders that I'm with are breaking down and they've never been in a position like this before. Um, it just, you know, a lot, yeah. a lot of times it just, it, it seemed hopeless for... And see, I'm, I'm really different. I really am. To me, it pisses me off. And I use that rage and that anger to save my life. And, I, and, I, and I, I, I'm going to die 
regardless at this point. I'm going to kill as many of them as I fucking can. You know what I mean? Yep. That's just, and, and I'm just being frank, that's my whole, and there was a lot of times where like someone, will, like Sergeant Stan did this to me. He said, Jones, you remember when you took the RPG at the ammo supply point? I was like, what are you talking about? I, I have no recollection whatsoever of being blown up, but he's, he, he, him and multiple other people seen me get blown up and just get back to fuck, you know? So there's like times where like, I'm like, I guess that, that did happen and I'm just not remembering it. And, and, uh, yeah. uh, memory is a funny thing. It is. Know. It's so strange, you know, and working with a lot of older veterans, like World War II vets and stuff, it's always the equipment that brings out the most, like, you know, a canteen or a helmet or a weapon or something, you know, grabbing yeah. something and feeling it is what really makes it come back to life. So you never know what is repressed that might come back. You know, it's yeah. the stupidest shit, like a smell. That was a big thing I know. Absolutely. Canvas. Smells yeah. get me all the time. The smell. Yeah. You know, yep. yeah. There was um th- just to kind of trade stories. There was a, a World War II vet that I had um well, was working a lot. I do uh, with the with the whole reenacting stuff. You just meet a ton of vets. Well, you you used to. Now they're kind of hard and few between. But but the ones that came out all the time were great. And um, we had this one guy came out and he was a, a demolitions expert. And I was talking to him and I had like all this demolition stuff for because we were doing uh, D Day impression. So I had all like pull charges and cool. all this other stuff out tnt blocks you know all reproductions yeah. but it looks cool you know yeah. and he he's just eyeballing everything you can tell when a vet know when the when a, someone knows something because you can you get kids going oh what is this and then you got you know a vet that's like like looking at one particular <laughs> item and this and this guy was yeah. looking at was looking at my blasting machine and it's the one where it goes like, you know, like that, you know, which is somewhere around here in this mess of chaos. And, um, you know, we're sitting there and, and he's uh, he's like, oh, what do you do? for? What would you use for this? And I'm like, oh, this guy knows some stuff. OK, let's talk to him about that. He's like, what would you use for blowing up shell? I'm like, uh, I don't know. And he's like, you would use this. And I'm like, oh, OK. Well, the ma- I was like, and I'm looking at the manual and I'm like, it says this. And he's like, no, 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 no. That's wrong. You don't, you don't, you don't listen to that. Oh, that thing's crap. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, he's like, nah, that, that's shit. And he's like, he's like, what would you use for this? And I was like, uh, I probably would use this. He goes, no, 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 use this. And I'm like, he's like, what do you use Panzerfaust for? And I'm like, well, I don't come across a lot of those in my day. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, well, he's like, you know, you take the heads off the Panzerfaust, you know, which are the, the tube ones, you know, not the, not the Panzer Shrek with the giant tube with the shield. It's I like got the you. small one with the two. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. And, you know, you pull over. He's like, yeah, we take the heads off that and it's a shape charge. So you put it up against and that would, would you use for blowing up like, you know, I'm going to make it up because I don't remember like hard rock or something like that. I'm like, oh, cool. And he's like, how would you use this thing? And he grabbed and I, I, hand, I was like, what would you do with this? And I hand him the blasting machine and he just and like all he's he just starts like going, wow, that was cool. And I'm like, what? And he's like, he's like, I just remembered a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, oh, cool. And he's like, yeah. He's like, here, hold on. And he hands it to me. He goes, he goes, how would you use, how would you use this? I'm like, like this, you know, like, you know, hook it up and sit down in the crouch position and do this. He goes, no, 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 you don't do it like that. I'm like, okay. I'm like, how would you do it? Cause there's the only other way he goes, you would, you'd hook it up and you'd go like this. You'd, you'd bend down in the crouch position, hold it by your back and you crouch down and you twist it. And I go, why would you do that? And he looks over and his, um, his daughter and his grandchildren are like all over there. And he like leans into my ear and he's like, so you don't blow off your fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> my man. <laughs> and that was, I was like, oh, yeah, that's important. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. We never did see Bill again, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that advice. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. And I, and I asked him, like, well, where were you? And he's like, oh, I built the, I built the bridge over the Rhine. Oh, wow. Like, oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And then we got in, like, a whole conversation about, like, like how he was fighting off German snipers constantly. And he was like, he's like, yeah. He's like, they gave us like Thompson's and carbines. He's like, and I threw all those away and grabbed an M1 and used that. He's like, it's the best one for picking off German snipers across the river. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I've heard people say, I've heard vets say that before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. God bless him, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And I love they, talking. They are they they're a whole they're a whole other breed, and it's amazing to talk to them. I got Absolutely. stories for days. I could yeah, I could go on. That's for great, days man. They're not stories, these fucking yeah. pussies that were in Iraq and Afghanistan. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. I've been I've been, yeah. I've been called that a time or two at the VA. Like, is that yeah, like a no, Kuwait deployment? Entitled you know? generation. Yeah. yeah. Entitled generation. Yeah. It's like. Oh, okay. That's fine. Entitled to two fucking nasty police actions that you weren't mm. didn't have the balls enough to call war. Come on, That's come on, fine. Chris. You weren't in Desert Storm. You can't. You know. <laughs> oh, no, no. Even better, Chris. You see these guys? The Cold War veterans. <laughs> I've seen that. I'm Have not, you seen those guys? Dude, I got in an argument with a guy. I, I learned about. <laughs> I'm such an asshole. And I said, uh, I was like, uh, this guy, not. It, it is what it is. Whatever you want to do is fine. That's fine. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Uh, yeah, exactly. I, was, I made a joke, and uh, this guy, he said he was a Marine. I, I respect him a lot. He, I was in a VA group with him, a good man. And uh, he said, uh, uh, he said, you know, those Cold War, War veterans and their PTSD, and I just started laughing. And uh, he was like, what's so funny? I was like, they didn't do nothing. And he was like... Uh, he was like, no, they did all types of stuff. And he's telling me it's this. And he was like, the fear they had to live with, you know, and, and stuff like that. And I was oh, just yeah. like, yeah. okay, but when you say veteran, to me, it means like you went somewhere and like you fought, right? Right. Yeah. You so got shot at. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so we agreed, you know, you know, whatever you want to do is fine. Okay. That's fine. But all right. <clears throat> Yeah, no, I, I, I'm i completely with you on that. Is um, Back in my bar days, I encountered a lot of these uh, Cold War veteran types. Some of them wearing hats yeah. that they had custom made. They're all spec ops and shit. Now. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I was fifth group, Munich, yeah. 72. <laughs> you know, like. was, my records are classified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my records are classified. Roger. I, dude, I met a guy. You would have loved this, Chris. I met a guy who was a uh, Marine sniper. In the 82nd Marine Division in 1994 in Iraq. Now, w- what about that sounds wrong to you? Well, all of it. it, it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, yep. I, I see them where I work, man. I see them all the time. Oh, the, the boomer fuds that oh, dude. The, the posers and the Cold War guys that were like fucking this is, 42 alphas and I, yeah. I get into this with them all the time and I, and, I, and I tell them like, I understand you're just, you're just training. But when you come up to me and you're like, uh, well, I, you know, I'm a badass because I trained for this scenario a hundred times. Well, I guarantee you the first time you're in anything. You you'll ne- it'll never be anywhere close to any scenario you've ever dealt with in your life. I, I, right, I, and if you if you were, you'll piss shit and throw up at the same right. time and cower under a bed. The yeah. point is, is you train to be you know like you train for situations, but you train to be yep. you know kind of well rounded for anything, right? And they'll come in here and right. they'll just be like, "Well, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this," and I'm like, "No, I don't. Um, <laughs> no, I don't have to do any of that." Weird. And, and they're like, well, how do you know? And I'm like, well, I've been to combat. And I didn't do a fucking thing of any of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I did just fine. Well, that's, yeah, right. They don't, they don't like hearing that, though. They don't like no, hearing they that, don't. which is fun. Remember the hey, five Ds fun. of combat? You know? <laughs> but, you know, I don't have anything against them training. It's just when you act like a hard ass because you train, I just, I well, can't no, do exactly. it. That's the thing yeah. is, like, I met a lot of Cold War vets. They're like, yo, I was, you know, and I just keep my mouth shut, you know, while they're bloviating and doing their thing. I'm like, yeah, and so we had the, we had the, the Red Army. Was, no, they, they do. They're like, we had the Red Army. We, they could have called us up at any moment. We would have been nuked. Blah, blah, blah. And then <clears throat> and somebody, like, instead of reenacting event several years ago, and uh, one of my friends is like, yeah, well, Mike was in the army. I'm like, don't, 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 just <laughs> yeah. don't fucking do he that. Don't say that. And then he goes, "Oh, you're a fellow veteran." I'm like, "Nah, not in the way you see it." But yes, I was in the military. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you 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 young bucks, you you entitled generation, you millennials, just don't get it. I'm like, yeah, I was in fucking Iraq in 2009, 2010. Well, what was your MOS? I'm like 11 Bravo. Bingo. Oh, oh, uh, well. Yes, you get it, and I'm like, yeah, I get it. You don't, so shut the fuck up. The look on their face is priceless. 
Way to assume everything <laughs> till I chopped you down. Like, you... <laughs> yep, exactly. That's all I've got for questions on the actual film. But no, I'm glad, um, you know, even though you talked about things that are not easy to talk about, like, I just wanted to see if that particular scene, like, where you're explicitly named, like, if that was accurate, and it was, so, you know, it didn't show everything, of course, because, like you said, it's chaos. And so, okay, I guess it's my last question, is did the film get anywhere near being able to convey the amount of chaos that was going on? Did they, did they yeah. kind of portray that to the average Joe? Yeah, okay, exactly. I think it could have right. been a little more, you know, it's, uh, like, yeah, when, when yeah, yeah. um... Well, like I said, it's a movie, right? It's a movie. But yep, yep, it, yep, when yep. Carter runs to give ammo, it yeah. really wasn't that far. But in reality, it's pretty difficult to get to it. I mean, it wasn't just like a, a you know, like we can turn around and, and, and do this. So it's just, uh, yeah, man, that <laughs> that fucking movie. And, and, and at the end, they're <laughs> flying out, and it's daylight. And the bomb goes off. They right. they rigged the bomb rock. First off, we left at nighttime. And let, I got a funny story for you. Did I answer your question? I'm sorry. I did, what was the question? You did. Go okay. ahead. Yep. So, um, we 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 loaded up everything. I think it's like three or four days <clears> later, <throat> and uh, um, we're, we're we're leaving. They're giving us like the flight rotation. They're like, okay, so these people are leaving first. Ten minutes mm -hmm. later, yep. a bird's coming in, and these guys are leaving. Ten minutes later, these guys are leaving. So it went down the line, and I think it was like five birds or something, or six. And they're like ten minutes after one another. And then they're like, Red Platoon, you're going to have to wait 40 mics. And and we're like, <laughs> did he for real say that? And it's just like, it's, they're like, yeah, they got to wait. No, wait for what? <laughs> what? what? They know we're here. What are, we, what are we waiting on? So we had to sit. I'm telling you right now. We were the only ones there on that LZ. <laughs> Completely just in the black. And then the cops on, you know, it's like destroyed. It's wired to blow. Okay. Yeah. We're getting on this bird. So it finally lands. We're getting on this fucking bird. They're like five minutes before it gets there. They're like, go, go. They said the. Go black or uh, take your ammo. Don't, don't be red no more. And I was like, fuck that. Yeah, am, go green. Yeah, yep. go green. Exactly. I was like, I'm not. No, yep. No, I'm leaving it in there. I'll take that L. And uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, so we're, we're getting in there. And I watched my first sergeant and Sergeant Romache literally go back and forth to, <laughs> to who is going to be the first one with their foot off the fucking ground. And I'm like, <laughs> can you bastards please just get on the fucking bird? We, we, yeah, I've seen we were soldiers too. We, we yeah. yeah, I was just about to say I've seen we were soldiers. Yeah. We, yeah, exactly. That that yeah, they want that moment for their their biography, and I'm like, come on, guys, like you know. We get up. We're a, a, after you. Yeah. No, after you. No, after you. It was like that. <laughs> Five minutes. It later. was literally like that, and I'm like, "Man, this is not let's get good. the fuck out of here, right? Yeah, that. right. Let's, get, let's get the we, fuck out of here. We should have left ten minutes ago, but uh, they, 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 we finally go up in the air, and they're like, "Well, wait, no, you can't leave us hanging. Who got the last fucking leg? Oh God, that's a good. I can't remember. I think it was Roe. I think it was Roe." Ro, Ro, he can now, he can now, he can now put it in his book. There you go. <laughs> yeah. well, I'll tell you this, bro. <laughs> Read the last sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could just explain how savage that man is. <laughs> he is a complete savage. He, dude, I'll tell you this. If you, never mind. I'm not gonna say that. He, <laughs> he will ruin Fun better of it. Well, you, okay. you could say it. You could say it. No, no, no. He needs. We to, can delete he, it. He needs to sign uh, autographs and. And cheer, cheer up, little kids, and and it, and you know when we got up into the air, they were like, uh, they were like, yeah, everybody started screaming and celebrating. And I was like, I'm not celebrating until I hear that fucking explosion. And uh, <laughs> bro, they hit that whatever fucking shit those, those, those guys had set up. They hit it, and nothing happened. So I think like we're literally like in the air, like waiting for it to go off. 
you know, just floating the fuck around. And, and uh, he tries to hit it again, and it doesn't go off again, and everybody just starts fucking dying <laughs> laughing. <laughs> and they blew it. I think they blew it up, like Eric bombed it, like, uh, two two days later or some shit like that. <laughs> it's like, so that actually did not work? Yeah. No, the, and they had, like, video of them going in there and stealing all the fucking food and the, the <laughs> ammo. So it, it did nothing. Oh, of course. Oh, it did why nothing. is that another movie? Why it work out so well? <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. It's like they had so many things. Like I was like, man, if you just had like me, we there need to do like... fuck up at the end of this fuck up, <laughs> like, right? <you> know? <laughs> But see, that's that's real. That's real. I, I hate to say it, but that's literally the military in a nutshell. It's it's here's this grandiose thing, and then yeah. it fucks up catastrophically. Absolutely. And it's like like I would I would laugh out loud if I saw that in the movie. It's like right. you have this like oh right, like, that's what I'm Chris, saying. yeah. Like, <laughs> dude, and that's what I'm saying. There's, is there's so many things that, and we're working on something. We, we, hopefully we can get something. If not, hopefully me, I, I can get something going. But there's just so many, and it, our deployment didn't even end after that. We were there for eight or nine oh, more yeah. months. Mm, right. And that's the because that's what you sent me that UCP Delta helmet cover. Yeah. That's the start of this whole thing. And like, you're like, yeah, I got issued a couple of these. I didn't use this one. No. I was like, okay, that's that's interesting. I've still got it right there behind me next to the book. And um, it's like, yeah, you guys went on to do almost a whole year yeah. after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> and I had my leave, like, right off the bat. So I was just like... <laughs> I, oh, you got the fuck out of Dodge, and then you came back and had to oh, do the whole. Bro. Oh, dude! Jesus. Like when I got back, so like I was gone, I think for like a month, and then when I got back, it was like a month later. October third happened, and it was just like, man. It, but I was in firefights. Gosh, man, it was just a matter of time. I knew it. We all knew it. It was just a matter of time. So, how, yeah. yeah, how hostile was the environment leading up to the the battle? Oh, I mean, man. they tried to depict it in the in the movie, you know, a bit with things. Obviously, you know, the different changes of command. Um, but was it is that, you know, you guys knew something was up, something big. Yeah. We, uh, I'm not going to go into the chain of commands bullshit and their decisions. <laughs> because they, 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 they uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, what was your question again? I'm sorry, brother. Give it to me one more time. So... Was it as heated before the battle as they make it out in the film? Like, were tensions ratcheted that high? Yes. Um, I would say it's even, it was even, dude, I, we would get in firefights two or three times a day. The When when we got there, uh, this one staff sergeant, I was in the shower, and they were mocking us uh, for what, you know, it's new guys on the park, I guess. And he was like, we don't even get attacked at night. And I was like, I saw he was fucking with me. Like, you know what I mean? But he was being dead serious. I guess they never got personally attacked at night. It was like the next fucking day we got attacked at night. And it was like a long firefight. Um, so, you know, they were, they were, and then finally Roe was like, they said that in the movie, Roe was like, they're probing us. They're seeing how we react to uh, contact and they're, they're trying to cut us off, make a plan to cut us off. Yeah. And that position was just a horrible position. Uh, you know, it, it we, oh, they wouldn't yeah. even let us. I'm not going to say his fucking name, but they wouldn't even let us uh, build up our defenses. I couldn't tell you how many times during that day I was like, "Man, I wish there was a sandbag here that was was there." So, like, like because it will take assets to build it up, or is it more like, or was it just like, no, you're just I just don't want you to do that type of thing. You, I think it was a know. mixture of the man was didn't want to die he didn't want other people to die on his watch um and he we they when we got there they told us that they were closing the cop down that was known before we even got there i think that they were going to eventually close it down so he just and and plus too i think he was at the this gentleman was at the tail end of his uh um time with us so, you know, he got the, he, he, my opinion, I just think, you know, personally, I just think he was thinking about himself right. and he just wanted to get the fuck out of Dodge. Could, um, could, could also the look of prepping and building stuff up, could that be a sign of like 
hey, come fuck, like, come and get us because we're uh, we're ill prepared or we're not ready. So would that be like kind of like a call sign to ha- to signal an attack? Do you think that might have been something that he, just to put like me putting my mindset into what you're describing? It's like the only reason why I wouldn't want to build up defenses is to show that I'm trying to build up defenses because I'm looking for a fight. Mm-hmm. So it's like made possible. I, I know it's all speculation and and you know all that other stuff, but like that would be the only thing I could think about the theorizing that because man yeah I, I could i couldn't imagine not being able to build up it was irritating i'd be like fuck you <laughs> yeah well that's how a lot of us felt i'm putting the sandbag right here you know yeah, yeah. that's like how a lot of, i remember and i'll tell you this we we put sandbags up and they made us take them down that's how stupid that's, fun. that's how stupid they yeah. were and 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 you know <laughs> I'm not Mr. Academia. I'm not Mr. Officer Man. I'm not Mr. I've been in the, the Army for 10 years. But by God, I know we ain't got shit for defense. And <laughs> we need to build something <laughs> up, man. Like, you know, like, the, our, one, one of the only defenses we had on the, uh, I believe it would have been, like, uh, south, southwest and, and just basically south of us on that mountain was just sea wire. In just one strand of sea wire. If you get a running go where the mountain is so steep, <laughs> you could just jump over the sea wire. And they did. Yeah. It's 18, 18 inches tall. Like, yeah, exactly. it's not that big. And yeah, they're not going to do like there was cracks. What? See, they were stupid. When the Taliban broke in on the ANA side, they got really excited. Maybe they were a little bit uh, pussy and not wanting to engage with us in close, but they set. They they set that area on fire, and what it did was is it blocked it to where they couldn't get in anymore. So they blocked their own <laughs> fucking way in. That's how fucking smart they were. Uh, and uh, good wait, shit. So, so they set on fire to like, I I I don't know. I don't know You're either. It doesn't make fire, any like, sense. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. You know, but we just know, to, I guess scare tactics. I guess maybe you know they're like well, fuck. I ain't going in there with them because I mean yeah yeah yeah. We were <laughs> fucking. Out. We were just yeah. smoking them, man. When the everybody close to us, you were getting smoked. It is, it, it and then they. This is what I always say: is they busted their nut. Like they don't have logistics. They don't have uh, you know a shit ton of ammo just stashed to where they can carry it, or like a truck or a mule to bring it to them. So they're busting their nut and they're running out of you know. So they're like, I ain't fucking engaging these people, and and. I, and, and this is another thing in the movie I wish maybe they did was, man, I can't remember all the aircraft that they used, but God, they dumped everything they had. And it was, like I said, so violent. I mean, like, uh, just world destroying shit I've seen. Like, they told us, they told us one of us should at least have died from, you know, how close they yeah, were. Yeah, blue on blue. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. For danger, danger close. Danger close, zone. exactly. Yeah. So, because uh, I'm, because uh, I mean, I, I go ahead, Brian. Uh, I was a good friend of mine. Um, he was a long career in military intelligence and everything, and uh, he was very early in the Afghanistan campaign. Had a call airstrike in basically on himself, and to this day, he will fucking buy any pilot he sees or fight a pilot or drink. And like, you literally saved her ass. And not like the Hollywood, like, oh, you did. Like, this fucking happened. And just like you said, like, the fucking ground shaking, random fucking planes you've never seen showing up. (laughs) It's like dropping munitions and like, fuck, you know, just like an actual, like, you know, save my ass situation. Yeah. So the the one the one thing I want to to kind of bounce back to the film comparison. And I guess to, to ask you a question, Chris. I, I'm I'm an editor. I'm a film guy. You know, I I don't. I've never experienced real artillery. To 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 I guess my eye and my look of the interpretation of artillery and or maybe not artillery per se, but uh, uh, drop. You know, ordnance drop of some kind. Do you think the film nailed down the look? Not whether or not it looks good, but I guess the because f- you know CG can only do so much. But but the but the. The, the thing that always stood out to me in this film, and I think I referenced it in my opening statement, is that, you know, the sound for this film is a lot different. That's one thing I do think like they did nail down really well is the sound in terms of a theater experience, unlike any other war film of that time and or even now. And it's only two years ago, but three years ago. But you get my point. It's like I haven't really seen another film that really puts an emphasis on the 
the just the constant bombardment of sound and 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 be and making sure that it is a definite layer of I don't want to say it's a character, but it kind of is. It 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 really it sounds very important, particularly in this film. And some more movies don't emphasize on that. You know, they 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 just don't. But this one seemed to really nail it down. I guess my question is, do you think it's portrayed well? in term in the film with the ordinance drop and the and the stuff going on within the thing like do you think that that holds up in terms of i guess war films uh yeah i thought it was decent you know um like you were saying i think it would be it's really hard to uh come come with the real stuff the real stuff is just i mean uh completely different but it well you know what i'm saying it, it's it's just yeah, yeah 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 um but i thought it did these the the thing that like i think i was saying earlier is just it was more chaos than that. We were more separated than that. Like it was um, uh, more bombs than that. It was. It was like mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Like there's certain points, like 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 in the movie where Griffin is killed and where Scusa mm-hmm. is killed. Mm-hmm. If you move anywhere outside at certain po- like you know what I mean, certain points through the day, you're gonna die like that. Right. Right. You right, can't yeah. move through a wall of bullets. You know, it, it's, mm-hmm. and so you got to hunker down a little bit. And it was, it was like that. It was just, it, it was chaos. The amount of bombs and stuff. And that's what I was saying. is like, they really busted their nut. They, 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 yeah. they, they unloaded yeah. everything they had on us in that first. And, and I think that was smart. I really do. I think because it just, it just completely just d- destroyed our communication with each other. Um, right. You know, well, it, it demoralized you too, yeah, right? Absolutely, because like you were like, we're fucked. This yeah, is the end if, of the yeah. world. If, 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 we're if done. you if you can't move and you can't communicate, it's extremely demoralizing. Yeah, you know, and just in general, and and from what I'm hearing, you're saying they did well, just times it by two on every single. Time. Right, exactly. Kind of, that's a good way to okay. put it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like going out the door, there was twice as many bullets. Oh yeah, around and around. See, you know, they, Scusa didn't you know, make it out the door. He he died when he when he ran out the door. He died. Mm-hmm. There's just no way. And 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 yeah, yeah. and this is what I, I'm gonna say this too. For certain people, and they're in interviews and they're in things. And when I hear them saying, "Well, I did this, I ran to this to this, I saved this person's life and this," no, you didn't. You know how I know you didn't? Because no one could get through there. I was the only one to you that could could possibly get to you that had any view of you and you did not do that i know you would be dead if you did that like it, it's just people it, yeah. it's that's the other thing that frustrates me and, and and i go and that's why i don't say names because there are po- points where people did have like their nuts came back and and they and they had that moment like I'm not fucking going out like this. And my my buddies are out there fighting and dying. I'm not going to do this. So I that's the I don't want to take away from that. And and when I think when I honestly try to take myself out of the situation and not be there and try to try and try to look at it, that was such a crazy situation. Um, it 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 and I mean it goes without saying. But I mean like if you think about it, you're an 18, 19 year old person. And you're fighting for your life. Your team leaders are dead. Your 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 leadership's dead. Your your the army has you spread thin. Air support's not coming in. Like that that like you said, it demoralizes you. See, I'm just lucky because, and I don't know what it is. And you know, I, I kind of contributed it to just how I was raised. You know, my people, where I'm from, and what the infantry taught me. And I just I said fuck it. I'm I'm gonna go out and die on my motherfucking feet. And and some of these guys, they just had a hard, it, it just took them a little bit to get to that. And that's what frustrates me. It, right. You know, it, it's just be real about it. I, I think you're brave just being there. I think, I think, I, I think a lot of people would think you're brave just being there. You don't have to embellish your stories. Well, that's the thing is a lot of people have the, the, the most, most of the time when I, when I hear somebody embellishing a story, if I actually talk to them for a bit, they're guilty of what they didn't do. Absolutely. Rather than appreciating what they did. And it's like, hey, if you froze up in contact, you were still fucking there taking contact. You can't expect everybody to react in this Hollywood way of like, oh, yeah, 
the fucking bullets come from that way. I'm going to run towards that. No, that's not how it works. Right. And a very important thing, I think, in the future, uh, we'll wrap this up in a bit by going, we're going to go to IMFDB. So it's like, it's the Internet Movie Firearms Database to show what firearms were used in the film. Okay. We usually do that on a wrap up. Um, so, Nate, if you want to pull that up. Um, but I think what needs to be told, too, about every single conflict that's ever existed throughout history, no matter what country, who you are, how old you are, whatever. Hey, you react to contact, you react to that kind of stressful situation in a couple of different ways. One, you shit, piss, and throw up at the same time, and you just kind of freeze up. Two, you react to it, you just do what you're told, blah, blah, blah. And three, you go, I'm fucking pissed, I'm already dead, let's fucking do this. Yep. And that that's what I've seen personally, and... Here's the thing is all three of those reactions are completely normal from human beings. Absolutely. And if Absolutely. somebody told me, hey, I, I was at, you know, whatever battle, I was in Fallujah, I was, you know, I was in Najaf, you know, in 2004, and, and they were like, I curled up and fucking hid like a bitch because I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, right on. Right, right on. Yeah. It happens. Like To me, you're, you're yeah. a real motherfucker. Thanks for telling me that. You know, like... Ex well, that's the thing. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. You, you know, um, my, my buddy Hart, uh, who got killed that day, you know, I loved him to death. Uh, he such a good guy, but I remember when we were, we were on the plane, we were flying to Afghanistan he looked at me and he said, he said, uh, um, Jones, are you, are you ready, man? You ready to do this shit? I need you to fucking perform brother. I need you to, I need you to kill some shit. Okay. Be an infantryman. All right. You know, I was like, all right, I got this. And he said, and he looked at me and he said, look, if you freeze, it's okay. And I said, I don't want to freeze, Hart. I, I don't want to do that. And he was like, okay. But he's like, look at me. I froze the first time I was in Iraq. I froze. And I felt mm -hmm. like I let my entire platoon down. He said, but it's okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you this right now. When we were deployed to Afghanistan, Hart is probably one of the bravest men I've ever met in my life. I mean, he, he, and, right. and let's think in the movie, you know, they say, and I just, I want y'all to think, you know, to, and, and people listen and think about this, this man, he had no children. He has, he has a beautiful wife at home. He, he has a beautiful family that love him. You know, his mom, you know, just great people. He, he's loved by all of us and he knew he was going to die. And he walked and he ran out there anyways to to try to try to save them in any <laughs> form or fashion. And think he knew he was going to die, and he did it anyways. Yeah. I mean that man. Yeah. That's I named my son after him. I mean he's just, and, and that's what I'm saying is like when people call like uh, my friend like because it's in the movie and it's in the book they'll say Greg was a coward or something, but he. Uh, I watch Greg kill people. Mm -hmm. He's not a coward. A coward would right. uh, lay down and just not do anything, which is what I've seen people do. Greg, Greg, <laughs> right, almost died multiple times. You know. You know, it, it's just one of those things. Crazy, yeah, crazy it. situation. It's, uh... Exactly, you know, and that's a good way to put it, you know. How can you call someone a coward when you're fucking I've seen him kill people, like <laughs> you know yeah, exactly a man can perform, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Uh can you guys see everything? Because I can't see any that I'm showing it. I can't. Well no, I haven't. There we go. No, I got it. Okay. Right. Okay, yeah. So um yeah, so you used multiple weapons during the battle. Yeah, I used uh yeah, I've used everything in combat. So the, the M4, it was actually just the M4 at that point, not the A1, right? Right. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you guys had you guys had burst. You guys yeah. had burst. That's just the M4. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. Uh, if, if people want to follow just to have the talking points as we go down, we're just going down the page on uh, IMFDB. Uh, just look up the outpost and you'll we'll be going in order of the thing, probably answering asking questions as we go. I have a few questions that I'm, I'm mm -hmm. particularly curious about, but I'm I bet you we'll probably see them uh, in here. But, uh, but yeah, go ahead, guys. Sorry. I just wanted to chime in there. Yeah, like, how quickly can you reload an M4? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. 
<laughs> do you got your slide of hand, bro? Come on. Yeah. yeah. What camouflage so, did they give um, you? You know, was yeah. there like a ranking system? Like officers uh, first enlisted? Did you make it Gucci blue? Come on. I wish, man. <laughs> Fucking cod kids. <laughs> um. All right. So the M4, we've established that we had M4s, or they had M4s. Yeah. Sorry, rather. Um, the A1 like started to be a thing a few years ago where it was just like burst is retarded. So, you know, I I've used it. You know, I've killed people with it, but I I just I, I've I like other stuff. I'll be honest. So hopefully we'll see something else. Uh, now I yeah, love, oh, you definitely see some of that. I love the uh, the AR M4 platform though. It's excellent. Excellent. But you know, a lot of people. <laughs> I'm highly impressed how accurate it is. Uh, uh, it, it's pretty damn accurate. Yeah, yeah. M4. It's, uh, yeah. I, I, I've shot out with an ACOG. I, I forget the power, but it, 500 yards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 500, yep. 550 meters, dude, fucking no problem. Uh, is, that, is that the oh, yeah. Trigicon? Trig- 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 an M4 mm-hmm. with is an ACOG. It, yeah. 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 It, the Trigicon trig- yeah. trig- mm-hmm. optic sight. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. God bless yeah. them. I, I, love, I love those um, in terms of doing that. I've seen them take shrapnel and still hold their zero. Huh, yeah, really. they're they're built oh, like an EOTech. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my buddy get mad. I start talking shit about EOTech. <laughs> hey, they look cool, but you know, yeah. which yeah. one has lawsuits about you know not holding? Right. <laughs> Just scroll down past these pictures because they've got so many other weapons in here. There's an ACOG. Yeah, I looked at it. Yeah, and th- that's the correct early ACOGs that have the different CQB site. So they had like the bar and then um, the actual sites. Those are the early ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was that like the yeah. one that you had or? No, I had one that didn't have, uh, by God, I almost bought one of those. <laughs> it makes me regret <laughs> I didn't get it, damn it. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, we ha- we didn't have uh, iron sights on the top of ours, no. Okay. Yeah, it's like the bar where there was like yeah. a fluorescent thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Well, there's still that on there, but yeah. AK 47. Yeah. They're just going to say AK 47. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you probably, you, probably, you probably got slapped with some seventy fours too. Let me see, dude. I ain't lying, man. I don't know if this AK was like this, but I found it after the battle because we had to go search their bodies and find all their weapons and shit. Dude, this fucking barrel was bent like this <laughs> on the AK. <laughs> Jesus, I, I swear to God, that. and I looked it all over, inspecting it, and I think he was using it like that. And I'm not even shitting you. Like it, just so, fucking so, spray so and have So he's gonna have to like he's gonna have to do ele- Was it bent left, right, up? It was down, like yeah. I think it was like right, yeah, or left. It was it was one, but so, it, it was like kind of so like he, that. I was like, <laughs> so he's gonna have to you, be like, okay, he's here. Go three clicks to my right. Yeah, two. <laughs> that's beyond Kentucky. Uh, windage. Oh, I know, that's right, like right. Afghanistan windage. I was like, man, yeah. I hope I that's hope Kansas windage. <laughs> I don't know if you were using <laughs> that like that, but dang. Um, yeah, keep going. So, w- when you were picking up weapons and stuff, was it mostly like AK variants? Yeah, we that like you know, bullpup AKs. Uh, most of the stuff was Chinese. So, what does that tell you? Oh, uh, yeah, that's fun. So, the but, Type eighty seven like side folders and stuff. Yep, or, and uh, no fifty yeah. sixes. Yeah, we had a bunch of SKSs. They still use SKSs, uh, Russian and Chinese. Uh, let's see. No Enfields or anything like that. Yeah, I've seen Enfields. Um, Martini Henrys or. Um, I think we found one one time, not that day, but another time we mm. found a martini. We also found a, 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 gosh, some, some old double barrel shotgun that was black powder. It was pretty good. And then uh, <laughs> I knew a guy that he found one that had a hammer and sickle stamp, like on the receiver. It was a oh, long, I believe like, it. Yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of Russian stuff there too. Uh, they, they, man, uh, um, uh, uh, Dragon Offs, the Chinese version of that. They had uh, um, uh, ro- a bunch of Romanian shit. Uh, I guess oh, that yep. that oh, yeah. that they got from uh, just when they go to fight with uh, the A and A or something. Because I, I know some of the A and A had some Romanian gear uh, or weapons. Oh, yeah. They had a lot of funky stuff even before yeah. the war. They're they're wearing Romanian penis helms. I can tell you that much. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. They're wearing the M seventy three eighty German like, style helms too, like back in the day. Yeah, yeah, back yeah, in Afghanistan. The day. Did did were there any um any any like like Russian or uh, German sub guns like MP forties, PPSH forty ones, anything like that? There was, but I didn't. I don't know what there was guns. I don't know that model specifically. Right, right, right. But right, there right, were right, guns right. like that. Night seen some. Uh, I should holler. But uh, a lot of handguns too. A lot of Chinese handguns. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. 
Chinese pineapple Man. grenades. Yeah. No helmets okay. or anything. It was all like chai com rigs and just because you were yeah. there, so it's interesting. Look, you, yeah, it was, it, you know. I'd, I'd say probably sixty to seventy percent of it was Chinese gear. Huh. So That's weird. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Because you got you got like they say here, like a Bulgarian. They used a Bulgarian. Yeah, just keep uh, scrolling. Yeah. What's that one? What is it's that? Just, it's just tape. Oh, yeah, I was gonna. Oh it. man, I was gonna point that out. Yeah. I said, this motherfucker has a uh, your Gucci AK. Right, yeah, you right. got a gold Cerakoted Burma? What, what I mean, rank is he? <laughs> right. You know? it's like, I know they bedazzle. Dude, they'll put like flowers and rainbows and lip, you know all types of shit on their fucking guns. Yeah, the tape and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Really? Before. Yeah, they, huh. they could, I mean. Well, bedazzle could, AKs is a huge thing. Bro, you could give them a fucking cardboard cutout of John Wayne, they'd fucking bedazzle him. I mean, they're fucking... <laughs> So th- I didn't like this scene at all. The whole Dude, sniper that, scene. That actually happened. Uh, really? Yeah. Huh. Uh, he uh, he grabbed it out of the, the dipshit's hand and uh, killed the sniper <laughs> with it. Wow. Okay. Well, I stand Rush, corrected. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You're telling you know, way to way to diss history there, Brian. Well, no, then, it's okay. You know, I mean, <laughs> he's asking questions. He's asking questions. It's yeah, okay. Fucking I also love the SVD. So yeah. you know it's oh it's such a nice gun. I think that yeah, one was that's, Chinese. That's, that's, the yeah. one he used. I don't I don't know. I don't think yeah, it was Russian. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. You got Berettas. Yeah. Yep. Berettas for Four days. Dog. Okay, so this scene too. CGI. <laughs> I mean what's up with this, Chris? Like, is he gonna be having his fucking M9 drawn and like just firing randomly? You you would uh you would be fucked up when you get back to the barracks for doing that like they okay they, that's that's what i'm wondering it's like that 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 was a hollywood thing i was gonna i forgot to ask yeah. that because there was it was him running out with the with the yep. pistol i get it I, I get it for hollywood it's like, in terms of like yeah. realism he would in in terms of just real i feel like he would run to the quickest rifle he could possibly get is that rod he, he can't hit shit uh that is rodriguez you know, yeah. maybe Rod yeah. didn't use it. I don't know. He should have had his M4 with him. Maybe, maybe he did have a handgun and was using it just to shoot it. I don't know. But you're not doing anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like that's the thing. Is like, why the fuck waste ammo? Like, did you have patches okay. on the side of your helmets too? Yes. Like that? Uh, we okay, had that. Yeah. yeah, it's fourth ID. Yes. Yeah, oh, uh, oh, yeah, I know. But I know that was a thing later fourth on. Fourth Brigade. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Task Force Mountain Warrior. <laughs> As the ISAF patch, I suck at fighting and everything. <laughs> I run away. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, the FN M240 Bravo. Yeah, it's yep. my baby. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm about guaranteed they don't have any of the guns I used that day. <laughs> we well, use a 240. I used it. Um, I used a Mark 48 at that position, which is like a 240. Oh, okay. but it's, it's like a, a saw, yeah. but it's a 240, right? Yeah, it's like they had Sorry, a Sorry, it's a saw, but it's 762. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I use a Mark 46 as well, which is a saw, just a little lightweight. Yeah, the front of that Humvee looks really bad. <laughs> really? I don't oh, know. Yeah. It just is like, uh, ooh. Oh, that's, that's the 115. Like, that's what they look like in the front. Yeah, but I think that's not a real image. <laughs> I should have brought my own picture. Show you some real pictures next time, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Also, okay, Redux. so that picture where he's reloading the 240, okay, Chris is a fellow infantryman, you're not going to reload that fucker out exposed like that. Nope. You pull, you pull like, that you're gonna, motherfucker you're gonna back in cover and you do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fucking, uh, yeah. Otherwise, your head is like, totally exposed. Yeah. Your whole, th- the gun yeah. is, ex- everything's exposed. Absolutely. And it's look at that, oh my god, it's got the pinto fucking, the bolt in there. Oh, you see that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking great. It's got the pinto bolt still stuck in there. <laughs> they probably took one Bullshit. off the uh, positions, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. But you wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. I know they wouldn't, but that's probably, it was probably a production one they just had on one of that, the. That's really nests. funny. Yeah. That's, uh, just notice that. Paratrooper. Oh, yeah. The stock. Yeah, the little stock. And then God, the, look at the. We'll use the yeah, they have the shorty the first one on to the one they use now. It's just. Well, no. So we they would have the fucking they would have the fucking hand guards on there the the rail hand guards. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a saw during the yeah that, that was kind of a fuck up by the way. You had a saw in the battle the... too, right? 
I mean, I, I had, when I was working at Cabela's, I had this dipshit come into the library. We had a, a, <laughs> a semi, we call it eye candy. We just had it in the store to bring people in, but it was a semi saw. And we call, yeah. they call them dealer specials or something. And um, so we had it in there, and this guy comes in there, and he's like, man, the saw is the biggest piece of shit on the planet. Like, it don't fucking work. <laughs> like, it's all this stuff. And I was like, really? I said, uh, were you in or something? And he said, yeah, man. Uh, I was like, oh, so you used it in uh, overseas, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, man. I, pff, man, I'd choose a 240 Bravo over this any day. You know, like. <laughs> and then he started talking about, right. Then he started talking about like a, 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 a Barrett 50 cal. And I was like, oh, my God. So I said, well, I'm going to disagree with you. And he was like, what? I was like, <laughs> I said, dude. I've gotten ones that are deadlined to work. It's that's I, hard. I could, I could, I'm telling you right now, it's probably saved my life and my buddies' lives dozens of times. I've never had one jam on me. I've never had one fail me. I've never had one explode on me or, or not work or anything like that. Right. I said, did you actually go to combat? And he's like, no. I said, what's your MOS? He's the guy that loads the fucking helicopter. <laughs> yeah, there, so, there you go. 92 right Charlie, you know, like. So exactly. <laughs> I was like, and, and I was like, I said, and when you were shooting it, it was probably blank finer adapters, wasn't it? He's, yep. And he was like. I was just going to say that shit. Yep. He was like, yeah, it was. I said, buddy, blank suck ass. Okay. Blank yeah. suck ass. Let, yep. let, let, let's, let's just. Called even, and then his wife came in there, and she was an eighty-eight Mike, and she she knew. She's like, "Is he <laughs> running his fucking mouth again?" I was like, "Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is running his fucking." Sorry, okay, we can continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't worry. Don't that, worry. That picture don't really quick. Apologize. That picture really quick. Go up. Yep. Um. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Did you guys have no the one the the bottom one with the uh shorty mag or shorty barrel? Well, nut sack. Yeah, it's a one four five. Yep. And um, so. Really quick, though, I just will point this out. Chris, you guys had the fucking rails on there. You didn't have the uh, Desert Storm grips, right? On the saw, like, that guy's got the Desert Storm, like, the smooth grips. No, yeah, we had... Saw or yeah. Mini Me? What's it say? We did have one of those stocks that collapsed like that, but not... Uh, yeah, 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 but, but like, not, I'm it, talking about the, the, exactly? the, 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 the grip. Scroll off, what does it say? Is that a Mini Me or a The saw? Mini Me? It's a, it's a Mini Me. Well, things. the Mini Me is a saw. Right. Yeah, but aren't that's they a little thing. different? But what are they use for the movie? No. What does it say, at least? Um, the, well, no, the saw had that grip like you see right there with the no, collapsible no, stock. No, I know what you're talking about. But I, yeah, I we had that. Say. That was on it. Yeah, it was on it. No, you had the rails. Yeah, they like, used an right? older model Mini-Me. We did. We, the, the Mark 46 had the rails and that one because we had older ones, too. Uh, uh, oh, you did? Yeah, we had older. We had a dude. You man, we had so much shit. I had an actual Browning M2, actually made by Browning. Um, yeah, it, yeah, we did too. We, did we actually you, ran the, the serials on one of ours. Came back to 1942. Wow, man, that's yeah, that's so yep. fucking. Cool. And dude, my my, I broke mine because I put it in a crow system, and the sear on the crow <laughs> broke the bracket off of the the. So, dude, I, I swear to God, like I had like a, a like a serious issue break. Like I felt horrible breaking my thing. <laughs> like I was like, like John Browning, please don't don't hate me. He's I'm coming don't for smite you. me. Yeah, he's coming he, for you when you sleep. Crawl the way out of the casket right now. Imagine this, look, Chris. If you're breaking shit, there's a hell of a lot more dummies in the inventory that break more shit. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like so. Don't feel bad. Like we broke shit all the time. Like. There was a guy that fucking disassembled an M2 with the fucking the uh, buffer spring cocked. Oh. So, uh -huh. Took the back plate off, and we were like, uh, that, get the fuck away from there. Bro. <laughs> yeah, not good. Not good. No, bro. Dang. So the PK. Yeah. Love the saw. Uh, yes. The PK. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a fucking bitch. It is. Find any PKs that's a good machine gun. PKMs? Uh, the uh, ASG and the uh, a and used them, and actually the guy I cussed out for putting dirt in Kirk's blood uh, was actually holding one of those. It got mm. in his fucking face. I, I don't know why that pissed me off. Him just putting dirt in his blood. There's a pool of blood on the ground, and uh, I don't know why. I just 
it, that's one of those things like Roman Shea told me about it. I was like, did that happen? And then the more I thought about it, I was like, that really did happen. I, 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 I just couldn't control myself. I like, I was going to kill him. Um, and he had one of those things and, uh, I think, yeah, they took it from him and, you know, just kicked him the fuck out. And then we had it in there next to the door and we're going to use it. Um, yeah. but yeah, uh, those are fucking money too. Uh, the, that that's a hell of a machine. It is. Uh, everybody really likes those things. They really do. Yep. I, I believe it's like an upside down AK in the inside. It's very interesting how it uh, operates. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. yeah, yeah I don't know like too that. much about it, but like, yeah, yeah. it's weird. But it's I love that ring. Very robust. Because that it's a, cause, cause that can do. Right. That's belt fed, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's belt fed. Yeah. It's seven sixty five four. Which, which, which one's the one that does drums? Well, this can do an assault. The game. RPD. The D's, RPD, D's the, the RPD is what I'm PKMs remembering. Use okay. Boxes. Thank well, you. an okay. RPK can use a drum too, but like they don't function as well. Okay. The RPD has the belt fed drum. Yeah. Okay. Thank belt you. fed box, okay. but yeah, the they actual been drum used is used on RPD. While. That's by that's three right. nine compared to five four. Right. Yeah. This they, is this they is they both a, blend together yeah. for me. So, yeah. Yep. They are yeah, pretty similar. They're... They both came out of that post war. From what I know. All right. Scroll down. Speaking yeah, of the Ma Deuce. Oh yes. Fucking beautiful weapon. My, beautiful fucking weapon. Puts a smile on my... Uh, you, dude, I'm not even lying. I could take that apart with my eyes closed and put it back together and time it. Like, I love that gun. That fucking... The, the bolt carrier block. Mm-hmm. Man, that fucking thing. Cup the nuts. The thing... It, it, yeah, cup the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Been a while since I heard yeah. that. Yeah, cup the nuts. <laughs> Get it out. Yep. And then, yeah. yeah I, I still have headspace and timing gauges here. Oh, I don't know lucky why. Man. I'm never going to fucking own one. Well, I'm gonna, I actually had the World War II ones that get it's like fine tuning with the timing, right? So you can get it to like fire exactly the, the rounds per minute you want to without fucking flatlining the barrel. Uh, but yeah, I had some of those too. I don't know what I did with them, I lost them, dude. They're fucking beautiful. Like that weapon is just it's a fucking beast, it is, and man. they've tried to replace it so many times. It's like, what I mean, let's don't, be honest here, don't break what's not broken, right? The best they right. can do is modify the, the quick release for the barrel. For head spacing, uh, right? The new one. No, actually, they didn't. The only thing that changed, actually, from 1921 on, is they added a safety. That's it. Oh, right. Well, the carry handle, or the, the, I mean, the quick disconnect handle is different now. Like it sticks up in the new ones, I think. The handle itself? No, that yeah. was on those in World War II. No, no, was, no, no, no. It, I think there's a new barrel, if I'm not mistaken. New 50 cal. Um, I mean, like maybe, the last five may, years. but you can't really do that. Like, yep. y- yeah. But I mean, the receiver I have to, hasn't I have to read up. At all. Yep. Look at and the also they had to do plastic. They had to do plastic fucking uh, hand guards on the um on the butter on the uh, actual grips. Oh really? On the spades? Because w- huh. yep, because on the spades. Yep, because the uh, wood is an MBC threat. Because oh, if God. you get sprayed with gas, it'll go in there. Because you have plastic huh. that'll. Uh, when did they start doing yeah. that? Uh, fucking sixty. From my probably? knowledge, no. From my, my knowledge, it was very recent. It was like two yeah. thousands. Wow. I never heard of that before, huh? Yeah, yeah, because um, there was a unit, a uh, buddy of mine that I had to play with, he was an E6 when we got back. He ended up training units to go to Iraq and Afghanistan when we got back, and um, he had a unit from Puerto Rico, and they had Maduses from fucking, like, 1940 and 41 yeah. with the original wood grips on the spades. Mm-hmm. And they were, he goes, yeah, you got to get these fucking handles replaced. These are flatlined. Huh. Like, these are not acceptable. They're like, why? And they told them. So they got that replaced. But, yeah, the, the gun itself... 1940 oh, yeah. 41 wow. so yeah. made by frigidaire <laughs> you know yeah. all right yeah the fucking ma deuce man that, that is such a fucking beast nothing like it anyway yeah at4 very loud very fucking yeah. loud mm. <laughs> recoilless rifle well rpg is a lot better <laughs> imho um this is more accurate the rpg is more versatile mm. and user-friendly yeah yeah, yeah. You see a lot of laws too. Yeah, yeah we had a see. bunch of laws. We mm-hmm. use those. Those work well. Yeah, they do. Uh, you know, like you said, you know, RPG is just a little bit more versatile. But you know, those work great. We 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 carried probably three of them in our truck. Slept with them. You know. Uh, yeah. That's why people were like calling me a dumbass on that meme I was in. I was like, do you not realize like I would sleep next to this thing? <laughs> oh, that that <laughs> like, meme was fucking hilarious. Right. Though. The one that you sent me the link, yeah. or I got the link because you're fucking Neanderthal mind. Oh yeah. But like um, 
No, I got that link and then people were making fun of you and I was like, probably just a fucking pogue. You can just tell he's at Bagram the whole deployment. <laughs> and nobody fucking replied. Nope. Yep. They're like, because one guy was like, where the fuck did this guy go to basic? He was like a retired CSM and I'm like Benning oh, yeah. and he just like liked it. <laughs> I'm like, yep. You know you it, brother. So. Uh, 203. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. I love that thing. My buddy, my buddy was so fucking good with that thing. He could, he could just, he didn't even use the sights. He just looked on the side of the right or on the rifle. And he's like, all right, 300. Boom, through the fucking door. Yep. Like through that little window. Some people was are like, good. What they the just fuck? look at it. Yeah, me, I don't like explosives. I'm kind of like you, Chris, yeah. where I'm just like, explosives freak the shit out of me. Yeah, not going to do that. Oh, there's your buddy right there, the Claymore. Yeah, hey, how's it going? Uh, he's... <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> clickety clack, don't come back. Yeah, I hate, man, I hate explosives. What's so funny is is I use them a shit ton, which is what's funny. Right. Um, I never, I was like, man, I'm gonna stay the fuck away from grenades. And then like, you know, just like <laughs> here's three boxes. Yeah, right. Throwing them over yeah. the fucking by the, yeah, by the yeah. end of the deployment, I've got like four on me all times because they come in handy. You know, like, it's just like, I remember, sorry. Oh, speaking of the devil, speaking of the devil. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at, yeah. My, my, my man. Um, <laughs> dude, one time Sergeant Major came in, he's doing the, you know, cause our platoon, man, we just like fuck it. We'll keep we'll keep AT fours and laws and schmaldies and all that shit and under our beds. Yep. We don't care. I don't want to go to a supply you guy and ask for a rocket to kill somebody. I just wanted to kill him. <laughs> and, and he came Head up in the middleman, right? <laughs> exactly. Let's make this a little bit more, a little smoother here. Uh, but uh, he came in there. I guess he heard that we had a gang of shit in there, and he came in there. <laughs> And he loved me. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know what it is about older Southern men that just love my ass. And they were like, they were like, uh, he came in there and he's like, I heard you motherfuckers got all these fucking explosives and grenades, and you just think you're fucking John Rambo and all this shit. And he was like, Jones, you got any fucking explosives? I said, Negative, sorry, Major. I stashed them all in White Platoon's barracks before he got here. And uh, <laughs> and then he, dude, he just fucking looked at me and he's like. That's fucking savage, Jones. I mean, he's, dude, he just walked out the door, man. He's like, "There's no help in these fuckers. They're, they're just, they're, 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 he was like, I think shit's our our motto is like a, it doesn't get any better. You know, it it, it doesn't get better. You know, you can say it multiple ways. Yeah. And the way we yeah. take it is is just embrace the suck. is all it's saying, basically. Yeah, exactly. And he yep. took it. it doesn't in, get better. He was like, he came in there and he was like. Motherfuckers, I think it's getting better. <laughs> it's like, it, you want to see what really bad feels like? Apache Troop ain't got no Nintendos or gang boxes. They ain't got no, <laughs> they ain't got no cafeteria or nothing. And we're like, you, you should have had guys from the upper Midwest. I know your buddy's from Michigan, but like, you know, let's be honest here. Yeah. You know. But you should have had guys being like, "Okay, Sergeant Major, you're 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 fraternizing with Jonesy. We get it. Right. You both deep south, <laughs> closer can the deeper in, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, all brother. that kind of shit. You know, we get that the sister fucker kind of camaraderie. We get it. Absolutely. Like it's a southern thing. Yeah. I mean, y'all wouldn't understand. <laughs> My sergeant yeah. was like, he ain't seen me in years. He's like, damn, Jones, you get fucking dipped in barbecue sauce or southern barbecue sauce while you're gone. <laughs> I was like, bro, uh, I've always talked like this. I just, dude, and I'm like an interpreter for people. People will be like, like Knight or, or whoever. Like, well, Knight understands him now because he's been living here a while, but they'll be like, the fuck did he say, Jones? I'm like, oh, he's just asking what kind of tires you put on your car. Like, yeah, I'm trying to tell you about what you in your car, man. Yeah. He was, he was just telling you what. It, man, I told him, he going yeah. he going up there and he about find a beetle down there, brother. I ain't going to lie. He been, I mean, and he's just like, uh, what? Like, yeah, you're you're not even trying. Yeah. That's that's the problem is you're not even fucking trying. Yeah, and I can um I can literally interpret. I'm like, no, so really quick, I got this. He can we're yeah. We're almost through IMFDB, Chris. So Pull you're your chirp. shit together. Sorry, man. I got a bag I got a gang of that shit. Uh <laughs> yeah. all right. So you got the uh, the one twenties that you guys you guys had one twenties there? Oh yeah. Didn't have eighty ones? Uh I don't think so. Yeah, I think they they let the Afghan. Actually, we did. I think the Afghanis used them in a lot of. Yeah, of course. Uh, all the shots that they definitely didn't fire. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, weird. <laughs> yeah, I get Rod. Dude, Rod's a hard ass man. He had one of those uh, uh, portable uh, mortars and he, oh, those little fuckers. Yeah, he must have not had it. Or? I don't know what they call them, but uh, he. Yeah, are they like sixty millimeter or like mm-hmm. what the fuck are they? Man, you're you talking about like the knee, like the knee mortars. Like yeah, where you sit down, you pull the fucking yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he What's set that? it up one yeah. time. I don't know what happened, and he hit his fucking thigh, and um, <laughs> it was it was blue and purple. I mean, I was like, good god, you thought he got shot or something? Um, but uh, <laughs> dude, don't fuck with those things. I'm glad I wasn't a mortarman. What's the trivia say, Nate? Yeah. Um, it's just cameos. Yep. Oh, Ty. Oh, Br- oh Lord Barson there. Lard Barson? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what we call him. Oh, Brad Lars, we call him a Lard. Call him Lard Barson. <laughs> we used to call him, dude. He's so perfect, this motherfucker. He'd be like, uh, uh, he, we'd be like, deer, eight ounce, or uh, eight pound, eight ounce, dear baby Larson. <laughs> Please protect. I mean, he thought he was God. So he'd be like, I, I went out there one time. I was like, it's like, hey, sorry, uh, Larson, once you show me that knot, you tied that uh, toe hitch on that one time. I like where I can just pull that string and it come down. He's like, you like that, huh? I was like, I was like, yeah. He's like, learn that in the Boy Scouts. I guess you should have been paying attention. I was like, oh, well. I'll go fuck myself then. I, I'll just. Uh, this fucking, this sister fucker <laughs> accent you're doing right now. Brings me right the fuck back to being with all you fucking inbred clowns. <laughs> you like, miss it. Trying to trying to communicate and survive. You like Jesus it. Christ. You're just like, like it's it's so fucking bad. Your life depends it, on like, communicating if, with these people. If if Chris if Chris and I were to like drink for like an afternoon, my accent would come back. It's starting to come back listening to Chris because it kind of goes in and out. But like I got like I grew North up in Carolina. Like the yeah, this the in, in summers in North Carolina. There we go. There, you there go. It, it came out yeah. a little bit right there. Yeah, it's like I'm that's that's when my accent kind of bleeds in, my... in and out. But other than that, I'm like some Jesus. kind of like abomination mid Atlantic hick where I sound northerner to southerners and southerner to northerners. So no one wants us. Right. So it's like you know, it's just like yeah, I'm well. doomed. Like yeah, yeah. Right. Mike Mike B makes fun of me to sound like I'm a southern. Brian makes things I sound like a Southern and then I'll get down to my Southern friends and they're just like, what are you doing? Maryland person? Get out of here. Go right. come back up North. They're like, get, yeah. You're confusing us. You're confusing us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Fucked either way. Yeah. It's, it's not good. Um, by association. Anyway, I'll try and pull us back on track quick. So what we do here, Chris <laughs> is at the, at the end of our podcasts, um, we just go through and give a brief explanation. Like since we have a, com- we've had a conversation and we're going to give it a rating out of 10, 10 being the best, one or zero being the worst, rather, um, of, like, just film in general, kind of comparing it to other war films, et cetera, et cetera, and um, why you think that way. So, uh, Brian, go first. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you know, a lot can be said. And it's really cool. Again, Chris, thanks so much for joining us, dude, to have these insights into the battle, into the platoon, you know, into the – the politics of what was happening in these moments of crisis, you know, it's yeah, just, no it's one thing to read about it. It's one thing to, you know, see it depicted in a film like this in a way. And it's one thing to have all of that and talk to somebody that was there. So, you know, it's just priceless information, dude. It's just it's what I really like to, to study and learn from. Um, so, you know, that being said, it's a very interesting film. Um, I feel like it suffers from a few things like in modern Hollywood and things with, with modern war movies. Um, that being said, you know, like bad soldiers, bad Taliban, you know, like Chinese wave tactics, you know, all, all these things, a lot of reliance on CGI. I'll bite. It was really good. Like, especially with the whole, you know, depiction of the depth of the Valley and everything. Like, you know, even watching it the first time when I didn't like as much as watching it this time, I really saw that and was like, wow, like, you know, it's, it really comes through. Um, you know, it's, it's a good film, but it gets really great once the shooting starts. You know, and the longer you watch it, the better it is. And it kind of, you know, just tells a version of the story that happened. Um, you know, and there's a few films to compare it to. Um, you know, growing up, I graduated in 2012. So, you know, I, high school and everything to me was like the surge in, in Afghanistan and everything. And, you know, Restrepo. That was like what, when I think of the war in Afghanistan, I think of Restrepo. And, you know, watching this, I definitely see a lot of that, you know, in a good way. It really just 
shows the well-rounded American soldier. Like that one scene where they have the guy who is, you know, taking photos inside the, the fob of the cop, you know, and uh, he's got all the scars and shit. And it's like American Americans can have fucked up lives, too. And that's yeah. so true. You know, it's like you don't meet the best not, not sounding wrong you don't meet you know the people that have had the cleanest lives in the military you know right. a lot of colorful people end up there for different reasons you know and uh they do a really good job with that but no it does a good job of, of showing you know guys in chaos responding to something and salvaging it you know and it compares to some other movies like we were soldiers get a lot of vibes like that you know um even that was more patriotic film um platoon in a sense, you know, even though the Battle of Sui cut the end of that was kind of a crescendo for other things, but still, you know, defense in depth and, and a collapsing situation. Um, or even the Siege of Jadotville, you know, that was kind of a more cleaner siege. Like, you know, they kept it at arm's length, but you know, that's what it really compares to. Um, or Ninth Company is the other one. That's a Soviet film that talks about paratroopers in Afghanistan and horrible. I hate yeah. that. We'll eventually get to how bad that was, but that has even worse Mujahideen. They like jump in the air and do flips and like, you know, kill Russian paratroopers. It's like, <laughs> oh my God. I've forgotten they, about that. They showed Just that to crap, the veterans, yeah. like the actual guys that were there. They lost like a very small number of guys, like five or six in the actual battle. And then they showed that to the veterans and they were like all walked out. They were just like, fuck you. <laughs> like wow. they pissed off all the guys that were there originally. <laughs> but anyway, you know, those are, are contemporary films that, that are like this, you know, a siege mentality. And, you know, I feel like of all of them, this one just really gets it the best. It really hits on all the different points of it. So long story short, uh, TLDR, um, I give this an 8.5 out of 10. You know, it just is really good. It depicts a lot of just good aspects of soldiering in the 21st century. And uh, it has a few areas where it falls short, but it makes up for it, you know, in the firefight. And just, uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a good film. It's, it's worth a watch, in my opinion. So I give the talking pillow to you, Nathan. Uh, I don't want to go there. Fine. Um, so yeah, I mean, like everything you said, I I wholeheartedly agree with. It's it's funny. It, it it's it's funny. It's funny going into into this for the second time. You know, I would have to say, like, you know, I really hit, it had an impact on me. You know, we've talked about our history with that. You know, our our personal history with everything. And and for me, it's like I look at that and I look at it in terms of like an editor and a and a and a film guy. Um, you know, in terms of it being a story, it, they play it out really well. I, the first time I watched it, I was not a big fan of them separating it by commander, you know, sections. I thought that was a very odd way to do that. But the second time watching it this time around, I actually liked it more. Um, and that was a very interesting take on that. Um, you know, in terms of the film in itself, like Brian said, it gets better when the shooting starts. I hate that I have to say that, but it actually really does. And, you know, the other thing is that going into it going into it prior to meeting chris and talking with chris about everything i was like man this is like it really cuts in deep it has a, some of its hollywood tendencies to it but then you know i like it all around but after and i have to keep it separate but i would have to say after talking to chris if i had to give the score if i had to change the score i would i would make it go lower only because of certain aspects chris has been able to give us but i can't judge it on that i have to judge it on the film itself the film itself you know it has its Hollywood flaws, you know, it has its chi you know, Chinese waves of enemies and, you know, things like that. Everything Brian said, I totally, I also agree with, um, not to double on it, but you know, I'd have to say, yeah, I mean, it, it, it worked better with me the second time it has its flaws. Um, I've been kinder. I mean, I've been harsher to other films for, for doing less than what this does, but I really do the, the good parts really pull it up and then the bad parts don't pull it down that bad. There's been other films we've done in the past where the bad parts really pull it down. I'm talking to you midway. So going up, uh, I'd have to side with Brian. I think it's an eight, eight out of 10 screaming Mel Gibson's and Chris. I like Mel Gibson. It's a running gag. I'll explain it to you off air. <laughs> I love Mel Gibson. Too. But no. yes, two Mel Gibson hear ratings. It. You hear that Mike a, he's a fan. Lethal weapon. Uh, oh, dude. Oh, dude. Dude, uh, Lethal Weapon. Oh, we could talk for hours oh, if dude, you want to right. talk about Lethal Weapon, man. I'll get into that. <laughs> I love that. that uh, cool your I fucking love... energy drink. No, man. Fucking dude, ranting. Do you see this? Do you see this? I'm I'm ready, dude. All right. I'm yeah, ready to talk about Lethal ready. Weapon. I'm on Chris's level of NOS. All right. Let's go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> They're starting to wear off. <laughs> <laughs> I might be. Um, here you go. Okay. 
So yeah, I'll take it from a different couple of perspectives. Um, it was like the the lingo I did like that they didn't hold back on showing how well they did, but they didn't like to the public. They they Hollywooded it up, but it's the closer you'll ever. It's oh, the yes. closest it, I've it, seen. What was your rating yeah. again? Eight. Eight out of ten. Eight. Okay. And um, so they they watered it down a bit, but it, it was like to the viewers like. That's how guys in a fucking combat arms unit talk. Like it's just always fucking. It's always about women. It's it's a lot more grotesque and like fucking yeah. disgusting in real life. It's it's so horrific, but it's funny. Uh, that's how you just get through it. But um, no, the, the fact that they actually tried to take that kind of lingo and like how guys talk to each other in that situation and put it on screen, I think that was bold, and I, I appreciate that because it's like yeah. It's a lot of cursing, a lot of dirty shit. Guys jerking off to another guy's wife, the picture. Not good, right? It's just, there's a lot of debauchery and shit baggery that goes on, even the most squared away infantry or cav units. Yep. Pissing right? on doors, you know. Yeah. Those sort of things. yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there is some, there is some debauchery that happens, and they kind of gave the audience a taste of that. And as far as kind of interpreting the actual story, and we talked about that. And as far as the film is concerned, if people didn't know anything about this walking in, it at least gives credence to the fact that this battle did happen. It was fucked up. And a lot of U.S. guys died yeah, and, and were wounded, you know, Chris being one of them. But like um, a lot of guys were killed and wounded there. And it never gets talked about. You never hear about or you never see it in cinema U.S. guys getting killed and for like running out of a door, not just like going out, you know, in a blaze of glory. It's just like running out of a fucking door, or running out of a vehicle, right. getting cut down, d- defenseless, like you're fucking done, right? That rarely gets depicted, so I, I will give them props for that. Uh, where it fell short, I, I think, is um, there were a lot of Hollywoodisms, like the the some of the writing. I'm like, oh, you're on, you're on a good track, and then it's like, yeah, fuck it, okay, you just fell short there, blah de blah. The explosions, the 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 kind of honor and glory thing, even though they they toned it down in this film, which was really a good thing, I think, it still was like this honor and glory kind of thing underlying, like oh yeah, we're fighting for freedom and for security and all that shit. There's some things that were said in there, and it's like yeah, okay, okay, wh- whatever. But anyway, um, so that kind of shit, the explosions, the action, yeah, it could have been a little better. The Chinese waves, blah blah blah, um. That's not how they roll. Uh, but yeah, it, overall, <clears throat> I think as a film itself, not knowing you know previously anybody that was involved in that, I'd give it a seven and a half out of ten. Just as a film in itself, being as contemporary as it is, and again bringing awareness to the fact that this battle actually happened in our lifetimes. So, and and I would have Chris, to chime in real here quick real quick hold on give me one sec the one the one thing i will say is that you can tell where hollywood stepped in yes in 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 every single time when it starts to fall short you can tell when hollywood steps in because i could you can see where advisors and got and and guys in your same position as you chris probably stepped in and gave advice and and you know accounts and stuff like that you can tell where yep. Hollywood steps in to either pull it back or to give in their or to take over in what they seem to be deemed marketable or marketable. Yep. Sorry. And then, and I think that definitely shows within the thing. So I just want to chime in there real quick. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. No, you're fine. Yeah, I understand. Um, yeah. Uh, me personally, it's, it's hard for me because I'm connected to it. Um, and I'm connected to it in other ways as like, you know, I know the guys that are, are making a movie and we're kind of on the other side of the aisle, but I think that, you know, if I honestly look at it and I think about it and I just look at it as a movie, I, I'm, I'm with like Mike B. I think it's a solid like 7.5, you know, for, for a war movie, you know, it, it's, I don't think it's the best, uh, you know, uh, because it does have bits of the story, but the real story is so much better. Um, it's so much more uh, love and pain in it, um, and and the hopelessness, and then and then finding that hope, man. It's just I feel like they missed out, like like you're saying that Hollywood stuff. I feel like they missed out on some uh, opportunities that they 
you know, they could have capitalized on to make it a little bit better. But overall, I think, uh, like I said, I like that it gets the word out there about my, my brothers that had fallen. And, and hopefully it, it, um, something, it, it will lead to something else. Maybe we can get a more accurate, um, uh, move, you know, Roman Shea's talked to a guy before about, uh, like a band of brothers series, because like I said, we had, we had a whole deployment basically after that. So it's, you know, there's so much stuff there, but just a movie overall, I think I can give it like a 7.5. Yeah. Yeah. So that means our total is uh 7.88. So not too bad. You know, it's, it's, it's worth a watch and uh, you know, coming from a guy that was there, if he can watch it, that means something. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> right. Yeah. It gets you, you the gist. It at least. It gets yeah, you the yeah. gist of what, you know, kind of happened. So it is what it C- is. Cliff, cl- yeah. cliff note version with a little bit of flair. Right. If, you if know, you're, yeah. if you think the movie was good, you know, um, of course, you know, I don't make a dime or nothing off of it. it you know, it's just, it, I'm just telling you where a source is, is Red Platoon uh, by Clint Romache. Read that book. Uh, it, it's, it has a lot of like our platoon uh, uh, mentality in it, how we acted with each other and uh, some side stories that I think are funny. And then also too, Jake Tapper's book, uh, though I don't agree with Jake 100% and just didn't get along with him, the book was halfway, de- like, decently accurate. It, it's a it's a politician and an academic person's look at uh, mm-hmm. why that battle happened and why that cop was there. So it, it it's a good read, too. Um, it's just one thing I just, and, and this is the thing I'm having nowadays and, and why I like talking to people is, I got to get the story out here about these guys and their bravery. I'm not going to mention his name, but I, I just, I want to just tell you how hard one of the guys, he doesn't get any attention. He gets no um, praise besides from us, you know, which is, you know, sometimes all you need. And I'll tell you this, this man's having a hard time in his life and he doesn't blame nobody and he works extra job. I mean, he, it just, how strong he is blows my mind. And how brave he is blows my mind. And I served with him that day. And it just, he shows me, you know, even then, to the, even now, these days, these men show me how just strong they are. And, and, and how brave they are. So I want to talk about stuff like that. I want, I want people to know about, like, Kyle Knight and, and uh, Justin Gregory, Josh Daniel, and Joshua Kirk and, and uh, uh, Joshua Hart, and, uh, you know, all, all these guys, uh, Sir Davidson, um, uh, Kugler, you know, all these men, they were great men, and they served their country, man, and I, I just, though it's funny, and we ate each other alive, and we were savage, man, we were brothers, and, man, just the, just the stories uh, and what we did blow my mind sometimes. You never have bonds like the bonds you make in the military. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and as they say, truth is always stranger than fiction. You know, yeah. Fiction. <laughs> right. You know, like uh, there's always three sides to a story. And, um, you know, all we can do is get as many sources as we can and just decipher the truth. So mm-hmm. thanks again, Chris, for joining us. And uh, Thanks for having me. That was the yeah. outpost. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so much for taking the time, Chris. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And please, if you ever want to talk literally about a movie and you go, <laughs> I'd like to talk about this because they're a bunch of nerds and they'll talk like a bunch of nerds, please reach out to us because we will happily have you on again. I, absolutely, man. I love movies. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm cool. I'm a nerd too, man. So, yeah, I'm doing <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. You just you just nail you just name the movie. We'll be there. All man. right, Nelson we'll 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 Nixon. Oh God. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you want to do, dude? I'll pull. I'll pull. You. Look, I need someone on my side. If, if we, if we, <laughs> Jesus we, we, if God I need someone on my side for Christ. lethal weapon. All right, so if I'm gonna pull you in, you gotta be my backup, man. I'll pull you in. We got we gotta back it up. Mel needs backup, man. <laughs> hey, dude, I always said you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll go through that <laughs> when we do it because I I got some bang like. I got some points of views that kind of let that. One of them, I say, is it's the eighties. <laughs> it's the fucking eighties. For fuck's sake, how, how much do you want to fuck this podcast? <laughs> <laughs>
on a scale from one to ten. Do you really want to jump? Do you want to? Well, that's fine with me, asshole. Put the Let's gun in your mouth, I want to do it. Yeah. I want to do it, yeah. Uh, on that bombshell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Do, you, do your outro, Brian. Uh, I don't even know what it is. You I'll really are crazy. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I gotta stop. <laughs> Dude, Chris, we gotta, we gotta, like, exchange, like, top, top five, man. That's how we gotta, like... I'll tell you this. How we gotta compare it. The, the... Yeah, I think we, we're done we recording. Oh. No, we're not. No, Chris and I are gonna go through this real quick. Oh, what God. Oh, go my top it. five oh, Mel Gibson sake. movies? Yeah, Oh, go. man. You put me on the spot right here now. <laughs> Man, I thought you just meant movies in general. Um, no, Mel Gibson only. Come on. Golly. What's the movie? How about this? How about 80s? How about 80s? I'll, I'll, g- I'll give you a break. Give me 80s. I love the you movie got... where he's a fighter pilot and he was frozen. What's that movie called? <laughs> what? <laughs> for for who, Mel? Yeah. Have you seen that movie? No. Bro, you need to check it out, dude. It's Which one is that? I forget on. the name. Gonna, wait, hold on. Hold on, we're gonna Google search this. Oh Hold on, I'm gonna God. literally. You're gonna Frozen hear what I'm gonna type down. Mel Frozen Young. Frozen. That is it. Yes, sir. Oh <laughs> yes, sir. I love that movie. Frozen Young. Um, he's never in 1939, and he awakens in 1992. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Frozen oh. Mel. <laughs> oh, wow. Think. No, I've never seen that. Okay, I gotta. I, I'm watching that tomorrow. Yeah, I, I tell you, a movie I watched uh, a couple uh, days ago that just took me back to when I was a kid was The Fifth Element. With Bruce oh, Willis, yeah. you ever seen that? Yep. I was yeah. like, Chicken Good. Yeah, Chicken <laughs> yeah, chick- chick- yeah. Good. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> God, you know, Repleton used to quote movies in combat, bro. We would quote literally like <laughs> we could quote Predator, the movie Predator in combat. <laughs> like, it would be like, I ain't got time to lead. Yeah, pon- <laughs> Poncho, take lead, double time it. Like, you know, it's just <laughs> I don't know, Major, there's something out there, and it ain't human. You ain't scared of no man, you know, just like, <laughs> you know, like we literally, and I'm telling you, like shit would set yeah. it up to where you could just throw it in there. And it was yeah. great. He's dug in like an Alabama tech. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, that's, Fucking it. All right, that's Brian, great. do you have your outro unfucked yet? Thanks for joining us. And until next time. <laughs> hey, Chris, if uh, people want to follow you, where should they go to? Awesome. I appreciate that, man. I was just going to tell you guys, if you if you want to, you want to see like interviews about the guys that were there, check out Midnight Chow on YouTube. Um, it's my buddy Kyle Knight's channel. He interviews a bunch of us that were there, and uh, he's got uh, videos coming out here soon. So just check it out. He interviews other vets, too. So check them out. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a rating. Otherwise, Mel Gibson won't stop screaming. If you like this content, make sure to check out our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram pages. If you want to directly support our work, make sure to check out our Patreon. All these links are in the description below. Until the next time, Scuttlebutt out.